Yeah. Yeah. Was that from yesterday? Okay. Yeah, he's he has medication for So this referring to Allah is talking about the people of Taqwa and the people of Jannah. And Allah says that they will say that all praise be for Allah. Once they have Once they have been granted Jannah and they got the reward for their good actions, they will say, All oh, praise belongs to Allah, who has fulfilled His promise to us. Sadaqana wa'ada. And He made us inheritors of this land, referring to Jannah, sorry, this is misspelled here, so that we may settle wherever we wish in Jannah. All of Jannah that they are given is for them, and they can go wherever they want in that Jannah, in that paradise. Excellent indeed is the reward of those who perform good deeds. 
So Allah here specifically mentions that He made us inheritors of this Jannah, of this land of Jannah. And so this meaning of inheritance over here, there are a number of opinions from the ulama of Tafsir. I'll just mention one here. We know that Adam alayhi salam, our forefather, he was in Jannah first, and then he was expelled, and he was put on this earth along with him and all of his progeny that would come in the future. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he is going to grant Jannah to those of Adam alayhi salam's children who are, who are deserving of this Jannah, and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show his mercy upon, they are in some way getting an inheritance from their father. Because Adam alayhi salam, our forefather, was in this Jannah, he had, it would be uh, getting his, those that followed in the footsteps, footsteps of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, you know, by being obedient to Allah, by having belief in Allah, they would inherit from Adam alayhi salam this Jannah. And those that would not be obedient to Allah and not follow the ways of Adam alayhi salam, they would not be able to inherit this Jannah from him. So this is one meaning of he made us inheritors of this land of Jannah. Moving on. There's a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam stated that Ya Abu Hurairah ta'allamu al-fara'il wa'allimuha fa'innahu nisfu al-ilm wa huwa yunsa wa huwa awal shay'in yuntazar'u min ummah. This hadith is narrated in a book, in a number of books of hadith. One of them being in the Majah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam mentioned that Abu Hurairah learn the laws of inheritance, ta'allam al fara'il and teach them to people. For verily it is half of knowledge, and it is the first thing to be snatched away from this ummah, from my ummah, meaning the first, we can say, subject matter of all of the sciences of Sharia that is going to be lost, and that is not going to be practiced. So one of the first. So what, what does it mean? The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that it is half of knowledge. Again, there's a number of different opinions about what it means that it is half of knowledge. I'll just mention one here that you see all of the laws of Sharia can be categorized into two parts. One are those laws which pertain to us and are related to us while we are alive. And then there are the laws which pertain to us and which we are responsible for after we are dead. So there are only two. And so all of the laws that would apply to us while we are alive is for example, know how to be clean, tahara, know how to pray, know how to give us a God, know how to perform Hajj, know how to get married, know how to raise kids, all of these things are things that pertain to us while we're alive. And when a person is dead, the only thing that would, have, that would pertain to a person in terms of the loss of Shadi is inheritance. There will be nothing else. There's nothing else to do while you're dead. So that would be half. That's one explanation of half of knowledge. And the first thing to be taken away from my Ummah, so, you know, Allah knows best what percentage of the ummah is actually practicing on the laws of inheritance and making sure they're following, you know. We find in many cases that first it's a matter of being aware of the laws of inheritance. So many people are not even aware. And those that are somewhat aware, when the time comes to actually put into practice, things happen. You know, things get in the way. Ego, greed, pride, you know, disputes, you know, uh, all kinds of things, you know, malice against certain family members, all, th all kinds of things get in the way and stops a person from doing what Allah wants. So, that's a hadith from the Prophet. Also. Okay, so we'll get straight into it. <clears throat> what happens when a person dies? So, there's this, these are the sequence of steps for wealth, for the wealth of a person after a person is dead. The first thing that will that this wealth that a person used, uh, sorry, that the person owned in his lifetime, the first thing that it will be used, what it will be used for after the person dies, is for the enshrouding and the burial of the person that died. That's the first thing that the wealth will be used for, and the amount of money that will be spent for this cause, for enshrouding this person, for his coffin, and for his burial, which would include, you know, the piece of land that has to be bought to bury him in. And it would include, you know, the expenses of, I guess, the funeral home and all of these different things that exist nowadays. So that money would be spent for this cause first. And the amount of money would be in a moderate way, which is not extravagance and it's not miserliness either. So again, this would be at the discretion 
of the people involved, you know, the family members that are responsible to carry out this task. And also, ulama have mentioned that when it comes to, for example, the quality of his kafan, the material that's used for his shroud, you can have, you know, a white piece of cloth that is a thousand dollars and you can have one that's twenty dollars. So you look at, you know, this person's standard and quality of life while he was living. So accordingly, you give him a shroud also. So if a person, for example, uh, was a poor person and the clothing he wore in his lifetime was very, you know, cheap quality and very, you know, inexpensive, then when he's not, when he dies, you're not going to spend his money to buy something which you would enshroud a king with, you know, for example, someone very rich. So you, the same type of clothing he would be wearing in his lifetime, the same type of shroud you give him once he's dead. That kind of money you spend for his shroud, for his kafan, and you spend for his burial. Okay. This is not nowadays, this is not a small expense. Nowadays, this expense could be pretty big, depending on where a person is living. Over here, if you get buried in the ICQ graveyard, I don't know, I think my, my mom passed away, I think it was about $2,300, something like that. I don't know how much it is now. So that's the first thing. The second step, for this wealth after the person has passed away is you pay off his debts. So if this person had lenders in his lifetime, then you have to pay off all of those people that loan him money. Or it could be debts not from loaning money, it could be debts in terms of this person that passed away had bought things on credit, never paid back the people. And so those are debts that have to be paid off. So you pay off all of his debts. After that, whatever, amount of money is left over after paying his debts, you go to step number three. Step number three, you execute the wills of this person. So this is not a necessary step. This is only a step where if the person made a will. And it's ulama mentioned, it's mustahab, desirable to make a will. So for example, a person would make a will that, you know, give this much money to this orphanage, give this much money um, to, you know, this madrasa, uh, to this friend of mine, so-and-so. So there's a couple law, uh, rules related to wills. Number one, the will can only be made from one-third of the remaining wealth. Not, it cannot exceed that amount. So if a person made a will, for example, $10,000, and the amount of money that's left over after step number two is $20,000, you can't give $10,000 because that's 50%. You could only give up to 33%, one-third. So that's number one. Secondly, you cannot make a will for someone who's already going to inherit from you. So for example, my father would inherit from me if I passed away. I cannot make a will for him and say that, you know, I make a will that I want, uh, you know, 10,000 to go to my father because my father already has a share automatically in my wealth. And we're going to get into how much, you know, of the shares each inheritor will receive. So I cannot make a will for him and he cannot. The only way that he can receive a will from me if he's already going to inherit from me is if the rest of the inheritors, they agree that he gets an extra amount. Because in giving him an extra amount, what's happening to the rest of the inheritors? Their share is being decreased. So that's why the rest of the inheritors have to agree and confirm to that in order for this inheritor who had a will written for him to receive an extra amount. That's another thing. The other thing I'll mention here about wills is that if a person had outstanding, you know, uh, salah that the person didn't pray and wasn't able to pray in his lifetime, you know, qada salah, make salah that he had to make up in his lifetime, or an outstanding amount of zakat that he didn't pay in his lifetime that he had to pay, then you cannot, without his will, without him making a will, the inheritors or the his family members, the executor of the estate, after the person passed away, you cannot just directly use that inheritance to start paying off, you know, for his salat that he missed and give the fidya, the ransom amount for all the salats that he missed. You cannot just start giving money to the poor to pay off, you know, all of this outstanding zakat that he hasn't paid in his lifetime. You cannot do that. The only way that this person, when he passes away, that his money can be used to pay off you know, the outstanding zakat and the outstanding salat and the outstanding fasts, okay, the fidya that's given, is if a person made a will. That this amount of money has to be used for these salats that I missed and I haven't paid in my lifetime, or the zakat that I haven't paid, okay? And again, the same rule applies here, not cannot exceed one-third of the, of the wealth. 
economic well, even if it's for his fad salah, then he hasn't paid, uh, then he hasn't prayed in salah in his lifetime. Okay. Yeah. In terms of making up fard salah, if if the, the situation was that um, the parent in this case would be, let's say, they're in a the hospital, they couldn't pray because of the whatever circumstance, um, and let's say it was for five days, what happens to that? Is it because they're not obligatory to pay those fard salah because they were in a condition where they couldn't pray, or should you still make okay. up for it? So, uh, if a person uh, is in a state that they cannot pray at all, and the state where a person could not pray at all would be a person is unconscious, or a person is so paralyzed that a person cannot even gesture by bending a person's back, for example, because a person is still responsible to pray even if a person can move a little bit lying down on his back. So, for example, if a person were lying down and he can raise his head a little bit, you know, that's enough in order to pray and you're responsible to pray. So, and if a person is completely immobile or unconscious, then ulama mentioned from, from what I remember, if a person misses more than five salahs, then they are all written off. If it's less than that, then you should make them up. And if a person never got a chance to make them up, then fidya should be given. What is fidya for that situation? Fidya is the same amount that we give for Sadaqat al Fitr on Eid day. It's that that amount is for every salat, that amount is for every fast. Uh, yeah. So for every salat and every fast. Yeah. That's step number three. Once we are done with step number three, we move on to step number four, which is the whole pretty much discussion in the seminar of inheritance, distribution of inheritance. So then we move on to step number four, and we find out who is entitled depending on which relatives this person has alive after he's passed away and how much they were supposed to receive. Do you have any questions so far? I'm sure I do. Yeah. Uh, so just to review, um, the will can't be more than one third of the remaining inheritance. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you have something in written in a will, give money to this person or that person, if that amount of money can't be more than one third. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So this is, uh, this is uh, very quickly um, the source for the laws of inheritance. So, so where do the laws of inheritance come from? See, unlike a lot of the other ahkam of sharia, the details for the other acts of worship in sharia, for example, hajj, most of the detail comes, for example, from the sunnah. Okay? And even when it comes to, for example, fasting, really a lot of it comes from the sunnah. But when it comes to inheritance, the majority of the laws and the details of inheritance really comes from the Quran, straight from the Quran. In, in terms of pretty much the inheritors who are entitled and what portion they get in what situation, like majority of that detail is in the Quran. And that's something unique for inheritance, which is, I would say, not for other uh, laws, uh, um, other acts of ribada, other acts of worship and sharia. So that's the first source for the laws of inheritance, the Quran. The second source is the Sunnah of the Prophet. One example of that is the share of the grandmother. The grandmother, her share is not mentioned in the Quran. That is established with the hadith of the Prophet. Just an example. The third source of uh, uh, the third source for the laws of inheritance is the consensus of the Mujtahideen scholars. So Mujtahideen scholars are the highest level of scholars. We do not have any Mujtahid scholars left. We do not need them because the madahib and the schools of thought have already been formulated in their principles. So the consensus of the Mushtaqin scholars and the majority of these consensus came from the time of the Sahaba. Anhum. One example of this is, for example, treating a grandfather like a father. So in the absence of a father, the grandfather receives the same amount in the same kind of scenarios as a father does. That's one example. And that is established with the consensus of the ulama. This is not necessarily from the Qur'an, neither is it from the Sunnah of the Prophet So these are the three sources that, that we have for the laws of inheritance. We do not use a deductive analogy qiyas in, in, in inheritance because that is against the principles of Sharia. When it comes to amounts and numbers, we are not allowed to use deductive analogy because these are what we call mawqifi. It's a much more detailed discussion, but we, it's basically something which you cannot use your logic for, logic for in order to come up with. For example, it's like saying, why did Allah tell us to read four Agas for Lord? It's not something you can logically come up with. So the same thing when it comes to the laws of inheritance. Yes, there is hikmah wisdom behind it that we can try to, you know, um, extract. But, you know, the actual reasoning behind it, it's not something you can just purely based on logic come up with. Okay. 
Yeah, go back on uh, on the four uh, the principles, the four principles exactly. Paying off debts. Yeah. Let's say the person who passes away has enough debts. Yeah. Who inherits that debt and who's in charge of paying it off? And if no one can pay it off, what happens? So the person passed away had debts. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens is that uh, when a person this we'll get to at the end of the discussion also. So one thing, when a person makes a will, uh, we'll get to that, inshallah, is a person supposed to appoint an executor of the estate uh, who's going to basically liquidate the assets, who is going to uh, make sure everyone receives their amount and do all the running around, and, you know, the paperwork and all this kind of stuff. That executor of the estate is pretty much responsible to make sure he finds all the lenders and creditors and make sure they're paid off, and that's what happens. And if there's no money left over after paying the debts, then that's it. There's no money left over. You can't do much more than that. Yeah. No, no one can pay on his behalf. Oh, you can pay on his behalf. Actually, it's it's recommended. No one is necessarily responsible, but it is definitely recommended that his debts are paid off if he does not have the money to pay off the debts because actually there are implications uh, in terms of what happens to a person in the grave if his debts are not paid off. So yes, this is why this is a good practice, which we find sometimes when people pass away and they're buried at the graveyard uh, or at the masjid after their it's not, janala salah is not supposed to be prayed there, but let's say wherever it's prayed, after the janala salah or after the burial, it's it's a good habit that you make an airline an announcement that the person has passed away. If anyone owes, if he owes anyone money, come to us so that we can pay it off because it has implications for this person's hereafter uh, in, in the grave, especially. So definitely very. Uh, it would be a very good thing that you help your relative by paying off his debts if he doesn't have the money to do so, for sure. Moving on. Uh, the next thing is, what makes a person who normally would be eligible to receive inheritance and who has a portion by the laws of Sharia, okay? He is an inheritor. What would render him ineligible to be an inheritor, okay? So the number, so number one we have is slavery. So if a person is a slave, we don't have this nowadays, but I'm just mentioning here. If a person, if a person is a slave, he cannot receive inheritance. So for example, there's a slave; his father passed away. The slave cannot get any inheritance from the father because the slave does not have the capability of ownership. Because whatever the slave has is the ownership of the master. So it's impossible for the slave to own because the slave himself is property of the master. So therefore, uh, the slave is ineligible to receive any inheritance, number one. So number two, if a person uh, killed his relative, okay, unfortunately it does happen. So for example, the son killed the father. The son would normally inherit from the father, but because he is the killer of who he's supposed to receive inheritance from automatically makes him ineligible. Makes sense. Uh, and here, there is a bit of detail which is uh, in fiqh. Okay, there's specific, there are different categories of, of murder. And so the type of murder that would make him ineligible is what we call in Arabic qatl bil amad or shibhul amad or qatl bil khata, which basically means uh, the murder was premeditated, intentional. And that would mean, number one, there's two categories of that, is that a person used a weapon which is lethal and which is intended and designed to kill. For example, a knife, for example, a gun. Or a person used a weapon that is not designed to be lethal and kill, but he ended up killing the person with it anyways. Like, for example, a whip, and he used that to kill a person, for example. It's not intended to kill, it's intended to, you know, torture or raise, it's intended to um, punish, but not intended to kill. So if a person used that, that would uh, make the person ineligible also. Or a person killed a person accidentally. So all of the, uh, so an accidental murder would have been, for example, like the examples that are given in fit, there could be two types of, there could be khatla in the feral, it could be an accident in the action or the accident in the intention. So the action in the intention in the given example is a person is hunting, he sees something moving in the bush, he thinks it's, you know, wild game. He shoots into the bush, doesn't know what it is, happens to be his father killed him, you know? Or, for example, a person is aiming at the giraffe. He can see the giraffe, but he's such a bad archer that it goes 10 yards off and hits his father, kills him. That's an accident in the fair in the action. So either way, these types of murders, what's associated to them is, the first type of murder was associated is retribution of which means a person can be killed in retaliation. 
and was also uh, associated to all of these types of murders and execution of kafara. And the kafara is a person has to uh, free a slave or fast for two months consecutively. That's a different discussion. Anyways, what's associated to these types of, of murders is retribution or expiation. And because of that, this will make a person ineligible to receive inheritance. Okay. Third, difference in religion. So far, this is very, very simple. If a person is a Muslim, he will not inherit from a disbelieving non-Muslim uh, relative. On the flip side, if a person is a Muslim and the Muslim passes away, then his non-Muslim relatives cannot inherit from him. Okay, so that's important also. Any questions? Yeah. So, so yes, uh, the, uh, in situations which yeah. So the, this is this becomes uh, this becomes a pretty big deal when there are new Muslims and they have no relatives that are Muslim. And what happens to their inheritance? Yeah, then there is, then there is a longer, um, more complicated procedure. But because it doesn't apply to anyone here, I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. Also complicated living in, let's say, Quebec, right? Yeah. Like if you don't have a will, there's certain things. That yeah, that's right? where we're going to get into the will part, for sure. That's very important. That's why we have, uh, we went to go see a lawyer also to get some more detail. Inshallah, we're going to get there. Okay, so the, the next discussion is the sequence of distribution to inheritors. So there are different types, different categories of inheritors. So this is very important to now really try to uh, retain as much as possible, okay? So you have different types of inheritors. The first type of inheritors, the first category of inheritors, they're known in Arabic as the Furu. Okay? And I have a piece of paper we'll, which we'll give out inshallah that has the list of all of the Dawil Furu and what they will receive in each case inshallah. So you can keep that. We're going to go through it in the slides also, but you'll have the paper so you can, that's really the crux of the whole seminar. So you have the, the first, the Dawil Furud. Who are the Dawil Furud? Dawil Furud literally means those inheritors who have a stipulated specific portion that they're entitled to, that is designated for them, okay? So there are 12 people, eight females and four males. We're gonna go through all of them, inshallah. So they will receive first. You give them first, okay? Then the next is what we have uh, what we call asabat. Asaba in Arabic means a male relative. Okay? And these male relatives are related to the deceased person without any intermediary of a female. A person cannot be an asaba if the intermediary between that person and the deceased is a female. It has to be through only male links. We'll get to we'll get to the discussion of asabat later also, inshallah. So after the Dawil Furud are given, the inheritors with specific stipulated portions after they are given, if there is a remainder, then the Asaba relatives receive all of the remainder. You, just, you give them the rest. That's how it works. So they will receive the remaining inheritance. Now, usually in most inheritance cases, the discussion ends right there and you really don't have to go any further. In exceptional situations, you might have to go further. What happens is that a person may not have those asaba relatives to give the remainder to. Or a person may not even have the will for all to give to for some reason. Okay, exceptional, exceptional situations. The third, the third step is if a person was ever a, a, a slave in his life, then the master that freed him, he is now third in line to receive their inheritance. He's third in line. So he will receive the inheritance if number one and number two are not there, or if number one is there and there's still remainder, and it cannot be given to anyone else, then you go to number three, you give to the master who freed the slave. If the master that freed the slave, he happens to be dead also, then you give to his asaba relatives, his male relatives. Again, these are, you know, you're not gonna get there, but we're just gonna go through this. Then if they don't happen to be there, then you go to number five, and then the number five is that the remainder will be returned to the Dawil Furud. 
So the remainder after the Dawil Furud, the inheritors of specific stipulated portions, after you've given them once already, there's a remainder. And the remainder cannot be given to the Asaba relatives, the male relatives, because they don't exist. And the master who freed the slave doesn't exist. His relatives don't exist. So the remainder are given back to the Dawil Furud. Okay? And that's done in a specific way. If we have time and you guys are still interested and you have the brain power, we can discuss it. It's actually a bit complicated. So you give back to them proportionately to their original portions. And so that's what happens. Then there is actually a six, seven, eight, nine step also, but because you're not gonna get past number two, we're not gonna discuss number six, seven, eight, nine, because it's not really relevant. Okay? So, so this card was the at least two thirds, because you're only gonna give one third to no yeah. people, uh, not, not, not these people. So one third can only be maximum attributed. So these people are, entitled to at least two thirds of the wealth. It could be 100% if you don't have any knowledge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, any questions so far? Yeah. Go back uh, to inheriting with, um, when you're not supposed to inherit, what would, what would, where does that money go or where is it supposed to go? Where you're not supposed to inherit, which one? Uh, let's say uh, inheriting from relatives, like, uh, not the same, uh, okay, so you don't inherit from them, but they, they wrote it and, the government, you're getting and they give you the money whether you want it or you don't. The government's like giving it to you. If they look, if they if they give you the money, um, you're saying the other relatives gave you the money, or the government decided, and I guess that they, they left the will and you were in the will, and uh, you're getting the money. Yeah, look, if the person that's a disbeliever. The relative made a will for you and you receive the money. It's halal to take, it's not anything wrong. I'm just saying, like, from <laughs> I'm just saying from uh, from the context of law, Islamic law, are you entitled to it? No, you're not. Okay. 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 Sorry, one the left. Yeah. For the one third that you can uh, you can uh, divvy up how you want, that was also included if you want to give uh, inherit. Entitled inherit a little bit more than what they're entitled to. You could give them that one third, or no? No, you're not allowed. You're not. So I said, yeah. So I said, you're not allowed to give to anyone that's already going to inherit from you. The only way that could happen, uh, the only first of all, that will should not be made. If that will is made, and that will, uh, the executor of the estate tries to execute that will. The only way that is it's legitimate is if the rest of the inheritors agree, because their share is being decreased by executing that will. I'm just gonna get some water, sorry. Okay, the next thing here is the size of the portions. So these are the portions that are in Quran. And the Dawil Furud, the inheritors with stipulated portions in the Quran will receive any of these amounts that are listed here. So we have two categories that we look, we've listed here. We have a half, a quarter, one eighth. We put them in one category because as we can see, um, you know, you put you divide a half um, into a half, it's a quarter, a quarter and a half into a half is an eighth. The third category is two thirds, put them in the same category because in the same sequence, two-thirds divided by half is a third, a third divided by a half, uh, sorry, divided in two, not divided by a half. Two-thirds divided by two is a third, a third divided by two is a sixth. So we put them in these two categories uh, for this reason. So this is simple math and I'm pretty sure it's not difficult for you guys. When you're working in an inheritance problem, you're working with these fractions. You're working with these portions. And so if you have these portions, uh, what denominator are you going to use? So this is not something which I don't think is difficult for any of you guys. Uh, so if all the problems, if sorry, if all the problems in an inheritance problem happen to be from category A, which means let's say you have a half and you have a quarter and you have an eighth, okay, in an inheritance problem, inheritance problem, what are you going to use as your denominator? You'll use the biggest number. So the biggest denominator from all of those fractions is an eighth. So you'll use that as your denominator for that problem to give everyone their portions to, you know, just uh, in, the, in the simplest of manner, right? Uh, are we following so far? Or, I was thinking about putting an example on the board, but I don't know if I need to. Okay, 
or um, the second point here is if, um, on, on the other hand, if all of your portions in an inheritance problem are from category B, you're dealing with, for example, a third, a sixth, you know, uh, and another sixth, let's say, um, then you're, again, same thing, you're going to make your denominator for the whole problem, uh, the fraction with the biggest denominator, which is six. So six is going to be your denominator, right? And that's where you're going to give up the portions. If the portion one half is used in a problem and you have portions, okay, from category B. So let's say you have a half and you have, you know, one third and you have a sixth, let's say, then you're going to make your denominator six automatically. So if you have half from category A, and if you have any portion from category B, automatically you just make your denominator six to simplify the problem. And in order to give her all of them their shares, okay? We're not going to get into the math right away. This is, this is, the math is going to come much later on. Okay? This is just an introduction. Okay, on the other hand, if, uh, if you have a quarter from category A, and you have two thirds, and you have, let's say, one sixth from category B, you're going to make your denominator 12. So this is uh, point number three, okay? And the last bullet point here, if you have one eighth in, in, in an inheritance problem, and you have, you know, a number of portions from category B, you have a third and a sixth, then you're going to make your problem, uh, your denominator from the problem um, 24. I'm just going to write a couple so that we're all on the same page. This is really not that difficult, that just maybe the language wasn't good. Are we following or is it? I'm a little confused. You're a bit confused? Okay. Like, category and category, they have, you know, which one they're supposed to choose. No, it's not choosing because the people who are entitled to that, they're already entitled to that. So you already know this person has to get this much. We're gonna, you're going to see as we go. Oh, but uh, to, just for in terms of like, this is how we write out an inheritance problem. Okay. So let's say, so if you had a daughter, the daughter would receive a half, okay? And you had someone from category uh, B, let's say you had uh, two uh, uterine sisters. Uterine sister is a half sister from your mother's side, which means you have the same mother, but you don't have the same father. Okay? They would receive one third. So you have a third, you have a half from category A. And you have one from category B. So we said automatically your denominator, you make it six. So you write six over here. That's all it is. That's all we're talking about. Nothing else, okay? On the other hand, if I have around the okay? Yeah. So on the other hand, if I had you know a quarter uh, from category A, you know. I think was going to get a quarter. Yes. Okay. Can this all from the new sequence or not? Uh, a lot of it, yeah. So a wife would get a quarter if there are no kids. And you had, you know, let's say two thirds. So two thirds, let's say you have uh, two sisters. Okay, they get two thirds. So. What are you going to make your nominator? You're going to make it 12, right? Because you have a quarter and you have someone from category B. So you make it 12. On the other hand, you have 24, okay? Let's say you had two daughters instead here. They get two thirds. The wife would get one eighth. So you would make your denominator 24, all right? That's all, that's all that's, that is over here. Is that okay? Yeah, I guess where I'm confused is like, let's say someone puts a will down. Yeah. Um, but it's very, like, I guess maybe time will tell, but it's like, for me, it's like, they put a will down. This, this is, this has nothing to do with the will. This is, okay. this is, the will is completely separate from this. This we're talking about, uh, you see, the, what did we say? The first thing, the shroud, the burial. Yeah. Pay off the debts. Then the will. Once the will is done, then you move to this. What if in the will they made a very simple statement like just give 
If you have, you have two kids, 50%, 50%. That will, Islamically, is illegitimate. Mm -hmm. If a will, if a will is made, okay, uh, where the distribution is going to take place against the laws of Sharia, that will is not legal, it's not valid. So, I guess, okay, that's a good question. If a person makes a will like this, Islamically, in an Islamic court of law, in an Islamic country, that will be scrapped. And that's it. And you do it as the Book of Allah tells us. That's how it will work. Obviously, in this country, things will be different. This is why you need to have the notarized will with an Islamically conscious mind to make sure you do the right thing. And I think it's the wording because even the things that are spelt out, right, that you don't have to put in the will, but for, for Quebec, for all intents and purposes, it has to be put in your will because they don't know. Exactly. This is why this is why it's working. Yeah. The will is everything, but yeah. Islamically, it's all. For, so so in so in the state we're in today, making a will would be wajib. Okay, making a will would be compulsory, and for that reason that you just mentioned, because if you do not make that will, and your inheritors are not on the same page. And the thing goes to court. As soon as it goes to court, it's happening on Islam. And you're responsible as a person that passed away because you could have prevented it by making that will. So that's what that's what it comes down to. Okay? Let's move on. It's just the portions that have been decided by Allah. Portions and the people and in what situation. Exactly. So we're gonna get there. Yeah. Okay, so now it's time to get into who the Dawil Furul are and what they receive in what situation. Okay? So this is, okay, like, like I was saying before, this is really the crux of the whole seminar. So like I told you guys, and I'm going to give you the piece of paper with all of this, inshallah, so you don't, because this is important to remember. Uh, but first we're going to go through the slides, then I'll give you the papers. So I told you guys there are four males that are, that have stipulated portions. And <laughs> those portions are not like, in any given situation, those portions depend on the situation they're in, in the case and the scenario they're in. We're going to get into that. So the first male is the father. The second is the grandfather. When we say grandfather here, I wrote the word true grandfather, which means it's a paternal grandfather and there is no female intermediary. It, it doesn't have to be just a grandfather. It could be a great grandfather. It could be a great, great grandfather. The condition is it's from your father's side and that there is no female intermediary from the grandfather to the deceased. If there is, then that grandfather is not valid, is not an inheritor. Okay? So let me draw a diagram so you can see. If it's a maternal grandfather. It's a maternal grandfather, there's a female link, so it can be. It has to be paternal. Yeah, it, could be, it has to be paternal. And even depending on how far you go in paternal, you have to make sure that there's no female intermediary. So, for example, let me just do one quick thing here. So automatically this one is not is not able to receive. There's a mother, right? This one This one could receive, yeah. Now you go to the mother of the, and then the father. Yeah. This one couldn't receive either, right? Because there's a mother that links to the deceased, right? Over here, you have a father. This one could receive. You guys follow me? Right? Because there's a mother here, this one can't receive. You go to the father's side, the father of the father, that grandfather, it could receive, he could receive. The father of this grandfather, which would be the great grandfather, he could receive. And the great grandfather of the father from the mother's side, he could not receive because there's a female here. Okay? Make sense? Okay. So the father, we have the true grandfather, which has to be paternal, no female intermediary. The, set, the third is the uterine brother. Uterine brother, like I explained to you guys is a half-brother from the mother's side, which means the deceased and the brother share the same mothers. They do not have the same father, they have the same mother. So in English we call that the uterine brother. The fourth is the husband. So these are the four males, okay, that have specific stipulated shares. 
and you have eight females. Okay? So <clears throat> the eight females are number one, the wife. Okay? Number two, the daughter. Uh, number three, the granddaughter from the son with no female intermediary. So again, when we say granddaughter here, it could be the granddaughter, but again, it has to be from the son, so it has to be the daughter of the son. And if it's a great granddaughter, also it could have, she cannot have the female intermediary, which means it's the daughter of the son of the son of the deceased. Okay, are we following? You can't have a female in between. It could be a granddaughter, great granddaughter, great, 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 great granddaughter. Make sure that there's no female in between. It has to be only for males. Okay? That's the granddaughter we're talking about here. Yeah? Are we okay? Sorry, going back to the males, the son was not on that. Yeah, because the son is not from the Wifuru, he's from Asaba. He's the one that takes the, the remainder. We're going to get there. Yeah. They were born through a woman. They were born through a woman, yeah. But uh, I see what you're saying, but that's not what we're looking at over here. <laughs> okay, so number four is a full, full sister. Full sister means that the deceased and the sisters share the same parents, same father and same mother. That's what we mean by full sister, right? Not a half sister. Then you have what we call in English a con consanguine sister. I hope I'm saying that right. Did I say it right? Consanguine sister? Consanguine sister is a half sister from the father's side. So the deceased and the sister have the same father, they don't have the same mother. Okay? Uterine sister means they have the same mother. Consanguine sister means they have the same, same father. You, you guys, uh, this is all in the paper. So don't worry about uh, inshallah, all of this on paper. Okay? Because I know it's a lot to write and remember. Okay, the number six is the uterine sister. Uterine sister is the half sister from the mother's side. So the same mother, not the same father. Number seven is the mother, and number eight is the valid grandmother. Now this is a bit complicated. <coughs> so when we say valid grandmother, it's a grandmother that does not have an invalid grandfather in between, okay? As long as the grandmother has no invalid grandfather as a link in between her and the deceased, she is valid to receive. Okay? But if she has an invalid grandfather in between, she is not eligible to receive. Now, what's an invalid grandfather? Who remembers an inv invalid grandmother? Someone who was not a true grandfather? I, I, I just had a maternal. There's a woman. There's a woman in between. So the so the so the untrue or the invalid illegible grandfather is the one that has the woman as a link in between him and the deceased. So if he happens to be a link in between the deceased and the grandmother, that makes the grandmother ineligible. Otherwise, she's good to go. Okay. So let me just write it down. I didn't say it was going to be easy. Okay, I can try to make it as easy as possible. Okay, so this is where the grandmothers start, right? Because there's the father, the mother, grandmother, grandmother, great grandmother, great grandmother, great grandmother, great grandmother, great -grandmother. and you can keep going. Okay, so 
I'll ask you guys, you guys tell me. Is she valid? No. No? She she is. Why not? She is. She's yes. okay. She's there's no, it, there's no, there's no, there's no eligible, uh, in you know, invalid grandfather in between, right? It's only the father, so she's okay. Is she okay? No. No. She's she is okay. She you don't have an invalid grandfather in between. Oh, it's only a mother. Just you just need to have an invalid grandfather in between. Not a, not a. Not no, no, no. A this is different. This is different. You need to have an invalid grandfather in between. So she's okay. Okay. Is she okay? Yes. Yes. No. Yeah, she's okay. Because he is a grandfather, but he's also valid because there's no, there's no woman in between. So she's okay. Is she okay? No. No. She's not okay. Why is she not okay? No, she's okay. She's okay. She's okay. She's okay. No, because there's no invalid grandfather. She's okay. Is he okay? No. No, because that's an invalid grandfather. You have a woman in between. So she's not okay. Is she okay? No. Yes. She's okay. He's okay also. There's no grandfather in between. Okay? You guys following? All right. Okay, now when it comes to the well, when we get to the grandmother, we'll, we'll talk about it. Well, that's okay for now. Yeah. What about the situation where, let's say, the father passes away, but he's adopted? Sorry. He's adopted. Adopted kids cannot be uh, legitimate inheritance. No, they pass away. They pass away. Yeah. So, like, for example, so, they so, have a full brother or a full sister, but they're yeah. yeah. When it comes to inheritance. It's blood relation. That's it. So when you have like adoption situations, you're not, they don't actually, you have, uh, when you're talking about inheritors here, they're all blood relatives. They're so not. even the brother and sister that he never lived with would still get it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so those people have to give away in their one third if they want to give something to, uh, People who are their family, they, they have to yeah. put in their one third account. There's even an ayat in the Quran, right, where the Prophet told, uh, sorry, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told the Prophet not to call his adopted son Zayd bin Haritha as his son, hmm. right? And there's a reason for that, it's because the lineage is important, and one of the reasons the lineage, the, the lineage is important is because of this, the inheritance. Hmm. Okay, the father. <laughs> so. The father is someone who has a stipulated portion. The father has three cases, three scenarios where he will inherit differently. Okay? Number one. Number one, the father receives one sixth if there is a son or a grandson, however low they go, meaning great grandson, great great grandson, you can keep going, as long as there is no female intermediary. So here we have a little inheritance problem as an example. Okay? So we gave the father one sixth. And because the father, along with the father, the inheritors are the mother and the son, right? So because there's a, there's a son there, the father cannot get more than one-sixth, okay? And in this specific problem, the mother will end up getting one-sixth, and the son will end up getting the remainder four-sixths, and you have your denominator at six. The six on top is the denominator for the problem, okay? We're following so far? Okay. Now, don't worry about why the mother is getting one sixth and why the son is getting four sixths. That you'll understand when you find when you have everything together and you understand, you know, how everyone gets their share. Okay. Right now, we're just getting through it. So far, we're good to go. Okay. Scenario number two, case number two for the father. The father will get one sixth plus he will get the remainder, whatever um, inheritance is left. Whatever wealth is left as inheritance after all of the Dawil Furuq are given. And he will get it as an Asab. I'm going to explain this again. And this will happen in the presence of a daughter or a granddaughter. And again, the granddaughter cannot have any male intermediary. However low they go, it could be a great granddaughter, great great granddaughter, granddaughter, great 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 granddaughter, however low. So the father gets one sixth that he's entitled to. And after you give him one sixth, you're going to give to the rest of the Dawil Furud, the rest of the inheritors that are entitled to their stipulated portions. Remember the 12 people that we just mentioned? You're going to give those people first, whoever is with the father, from those 12 people. 
Once you've given them, if there is still something remaining, you're going to give it back to the father. And you're going to give the rest of it to the father. Because the father, along with being a dawil furud, along with being someone who has a stipulated portion, he also happens to be an asaba. And if you guys remember what I told you, an asaba is a male relative. And we're going to get to that asaba discussion after the dawil furud, after the inheritance with stipulated portions. And those asaba are male relatives, they are entitled to the remainder after the dawil furud are given their shares. So the father in this situation happens to be an asaba uh, as long as a, someone who has a stipulated portion. Okay? The, in the first condition, the first situation, the father was not asaba because the son was there. And the son is ahead of him in line as being a male relative who gets inheritance. And so therefore, he cannot be, the father cannot be an asaba. Don't worry about that. It's going to be confusing for you to understand the asaba thing right now. Wait till the end, inshallah. So the, the all you have to know here is if there is no if 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 you if you have no uh, son or grandson or anything like that, rather you have a daughter uh, or you have a granddaughter, okay. And the, in this situation, the father gets one sixth plus the father gets the remainder after the rest of the dawil furud. The inheritors of stipulated portions are given their share. Okay, are we okay? So basically, he would give two sixths. Yeah, he gets two six in this situation because three, four, you have to, yeah, one, yeah, there's one six left, so he gets two six. Yeah. Are you okay? So where are the granddaughters and everything in this? Situation? You have a daughter. It's a daughter or granddaughter. So there's a daughter. Right. It doesn't have to be daughter and granddaughter. It could be anyone, daughter or granddaughter. So you have a daughter here, right? The half so you have a daughter and your granddaughters as well. Where do they fit in this uh, equation? Or it's just goes to the daughter. So I said yeah. the father will get one sixth plus the remainder if there is a daughter inheriting with him. So there is a daughter inheriting with him. The daughter is getting a half. So because the daughter, oh, this scenario, these are the only people who are inheriting. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So when you see these scenarios, that means these are the only people that are inheriting. That's it. There's no one else. Yeah. Okay. Are we okay? No, no. If you if you don't, if you don't understand, that's the worry. Yeah, I think I would have to like I don't know I. I this, all of this, uh, the, 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 the description of the cases is on the paper that you can refer to, inshallah, okay? Yeah, I'm not expecting you to remember this. This yeah. is not something you are going to remember. And me, look, I studied, uh, you know, inheritance over a year, and we had class like once a week, you know, and I'm giving to you in like a couple hours, you know, like it's not, it's not how it works. <laughs> okay, the third, the third case, the third scenario for the father is the father will only get the remainder and has no stipulated portion from the onset. He has to rather wait till the end, whatever is remaining, take the rest as an asaba. That's what happens to an asaba relative, male relative, they wait till the end to take the rest. And this will happen when there are no children or grandchildren from the son. So there are no children means there's no son, there's no daughter. Grandchildren from the son means there is no grandson or a granddaughter, but again, with no female intermediary. It has to be only through male intermediaries, okay? When we say grandchildren from the son, it means grandson or granddaughter, and it could be very low, like great, 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 but you have to make sure that it's with no female intermediary, okay? In that case, the father just waits till the end to take the rest. So you have a case over here, you have the mother and the father. The mother takes a third, the father waits till the there's no one else, takes the rest, takes the two thirds, okay? That's what happens. Are we okay so far? You, um, we're going to do some practice uh, after we, we're going through all this. When we do the practice, you guys will see everything come together. I'm telling you, though, you, just like this, you're not going to gonna be like, what's going on here? You know, and we're going to do the practice with your actual real scenarios. And logistically, this is a mother, this is a husband and wife. Are you supposed of course. To, are you supposed to keep your no, they're, they're, finances yeah. separate? Or no, no, they don't, they're not. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. This is unfortunately the son dies and the mother and father is alive. And that's, yeah. So you are supposed to keep it separate? So, you know, because like you know, just a lot of people, the husband takes care of all the finances and things in there. No, no, so, so the son died. Yeah. So the son's wealth is separate from his parents' wealth, right? So the son died and his wealth is going to his parents. That's what I'm saying for the mother and father. I mean, so to you're saying inherit, they're supposed to keep it separate. So you're saying you're saying if someone dies and the husband inherits, or if someone dies and the wife inherits. Like that. I'm saying this is the mother and father of the deceased. Yes, the, the money stays, stays separate. separate. Yeah, yeah, the money stays separate. Yeah. That yeah. So that's a good question. 
Um, just all deposited into one. Yeah, so that's something actually, uh, you know, it's not part of the seminar, but actually I'll mention it. It's very, very important. A lot of, uh, I was talking about that with my wife like yesterday. Uh, a lot of couples, when they get married, they have a joint account. And not only do they have a joint account, but everything that they own is all written, you know, you know, together. And that's not something which Islamically is recommended. Because although there is, there should be a healthy, strong relationship where, you know, you're using each other's things, you know, without necessarily having to ask permission and stuff, but everything should be clearly identified in terms of ownership. So you don't have to be, you know, having an um, ambiguous situation when it comes to ownership in order to have a healthy relationship where you're, you know, freely using each other's things. You can freely use each other's things, but it's still Islamically necessary that you should have everything identified in terms of ownership. Because things, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to these kind of masail, you know, things do play a role. So, for example, Mufti Shafi, rahimahullah, who was the Grand Mufti of Pakistan at his time, was the author of Ma'arif al-Qur'an, he used to say that in his house, everything was clearly identified in terms of what's his and what's his wife's. And there's reasons for that, and this is one of them. So it is important that you have, you do have everything, you know. Even if you have a joint account, you should still know, you know, how much of it is the husband's, how much is the wife's. Not only for this, but even for zakat, for example. Are you going to know? Are you going to calculate zakat? You know, so things matter. Um, okay, the next uh, inheritor, male inheritor, who has typically portions is the grandfather. So the grandfather has all the conditions of the father. It's the same as the father. Okay, which means the grandfather will get one sixth if there is a son or a grandson, however low. Okay, uh, the father, the grandfather will get just like the father one sixth plus the remainder if there are daughters and granddaughters and so on. And the father and the, and the grandfather, just like the father, will get just uh, the remainder if there are no children or grandchildren. Okay, so just like the father, the only difference is. The grandfather cannot inherit if the father is there, obviously. As soon, as soon as the father is there, the grandfather can't get anything. Okay. So we'll become deprived in the presence of the father. We're following so far? Okay. Are both of them part of the end of the list? Yes, they are. But it doesn't mean that they both have to inherit at the same time. They could be inheriting in different scenarios. So this is the case. So there many, most of the cases are such that they can inherit independently, but if someone comes along, then they go away. You go through that, like where you eliminate yeah, yeah, people yeah. from going down? Yeah. Okay. In your previous situation, you're saying about how everything should be divided. Uh, what if the consensus is that it's together? Let's say a house, for example. How do you divide a house? If, let's say, you know, the husband's making majority, the wife makes some, whatever, it's going for the expenses, it's going for the taxes, it's going for the house. How would you divide that house? Like say, well, you own 21%, I own 70%, you know what I mean? Like, because I, I find some of these challenges are, are, are a bit unique living in this side because, and this part of the world because of the way the finances and, um, yeah. you know. Well, well like, are you saying it's, it's recommended or it's haram if you don't do it? Like for example, if you have a joint account and let's say your wife has her own account <coughs> for extra stuff, right? But the husband's willing to say, whatever mine is, you can use it as you choose. Is that haram or is that the scholars say it's not recommended? Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying haram. It's not recommended because it's creating complications for other uh, other rulings of Sharia. That's why that's why it's not recommended. Primarily like the inheritance. Like zakat and like inheritance. These are examples. Yeah. And for example, how would you identify how much of the person, how much of the percentage of the house the husband owns and the wife owns? Well, number one, you can look at it in terms of when the house was bought, you know, how much was paid by each, for example. You would know. Yeah, and that's one situation. And if, for example, all of the house was bought, I mean, all of the money was paid by the husband, that's how the house, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's how, you know, you just look at it like that, that's how it works. Well, how, where are you supposed to attribute, where are you actually spelling this out? Like, where are you supposed it, to spell Dividing it? Yeah. No, you don't have to spell it out. You just have to have it identified that this much is mine. Should just be in between amongst you. Yeah, it should be identified that this is what I own, this is what you own. It's just for identification. It's not to divide actually, it's just for identification. Yeah. Okay. The the husband. Yes. So we're on to the, the husband now, the third male level. Uh, who has to be leading portions. So the husband has two situations. 
So the husband will get half in the absence of children or grandchildren from the son. So if there are no children, there is no son, there is no daughter, or if there are no grandchildren, grandchildren again means it could be uh, grandson or granddaughter, but it, without any female intermediary. It has to be only through male intermediaries, right? So if there are no children, son or daughter, grandchildren means it could be granddaughter or grandson, but again, no female intermediary. If there are none of the, if there's none of this, then the husband gets a half. So we have a situation here, there's only a husband and there's a paternal uncle. So the husband gets a half, the paternal uncle will take the other half, okay? The second uh, case for the husband is the husband gets a quarter. If the wife dies, the husband gets a quarter, and he will get a quarter if there are children or, uh, or sorry, I made a mistake here, it should be grandchildren. In the presence of children or grandchildren from the son. So children means there is a daughter or there is a son or there is a, a granddaughter or a grandson. But again, without any female intermediary, in this case, the husband takes a quarter. So we have here a situation where there's only a husband and a son. The husband takes a quarter and the son just takes the rest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now, the uterine brothers and sisters. So here, this will... Uh, this uterine brothers and sisters will go for the male and the female. So they have the uterine brothers, so that's going to count for the male. And the uterine sisters, I wrote them together, so they're the same. It's going to count for the female, okay? So uterine brothers and sisters have three cases. So if there's only one uterine brother, or there's only one uterine sister, uterine brother and sister means same mother, different father. You have a brother or a sister with the same mother, but different father. <coughs> If there's only one brother or one sister, then uh, that brother or sister will get only one sixth. So for example, here you have one uterine brother gets one sixth, and you have a full brother, he'll just take the rest. <laughs> full brother means same father, same mother, okay? One third if there are two or more. So if you have, for example, two uterine sisters, or you have two uterine brothers, or you have one uterine brother and one, one uterine sister, whichever the case, <clears throat> okay, whatever the case, you have two of them, Two sisters or two brothers or one sister or one brother, but they have the uterine. Both of them will share one third together, and uh, then whatever is the rest afterwards. So here you have a case, uterine sister and uterine brother. Both of them are sharing one third. So when you split the one third between the two of them, they both get one sixth. The rest of it, here you have a case where there's only a paternal uncle left. He'll take the two thirds, okay? And that's it. Third situation. Third case for the uterine brothers and sisters. So they will be deprived. They will get nothing. If with the uterine brothers and sisters, the other inheritors that are inheriting happen to be children of the deceased. Children of the deceased, he has sons or he has daughters that are inheriting with the uterine brothers and sisters. He has grandchildren that are inheriting. Grandchildren, again, has to be from the son, cannot be from the daughter, cannot be with female intermediaries, have to be with only male, male intermediaries. However low they go, it could be great, 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 great grandchildren, doesn't matter. Make sure there's no female intermediary. In this case, uh, the uterine brother and sister will be deprived. Also, if there's a father inheriting with the uterine brother or sister, or there's a grandfather, however high they go, it could be great, 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 great grandfather, provided that obviously that grandfather is, obviously has to be legitimate, right? He has to be true. It can't be someone that's not inheriting. In this case also, the uterine brother and sister will be deprived. Okay, in the presence of a father, grandfather, or children and grandchildren. We're following so far? Yeah, two questions. One, all these specific cases, yeah. are, these, uh, uh, are these something that the scholars do, or it's all in the Quran? Majority of it in the Quran. Yeah. So if this happens, do this, if this yeah, happens. Yeah, you can, if you actually look at the translation of the ayat, it's very detailed. Oh. Yeah, very detailed. And so in this scenario... I mean, I could have tried to write the ayat of Quran specifically, which relates to each one, but that would make it pretty complicated. But it says like one six goes here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Whichever ones I know by heart, I'll try to mention them. Yeah. And so in this case, like, son, and so if you have grandchildren, the son and the children might be young, the son takes it on those grandchildren. Say that again, sorry? So you have, let's say the, the let's say your mother passed away, you have grandchildren, you have children. Yeah. So it's going to the grandchildren. So the son takes it like it doesn't go divided to the grand, the grandchildren. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, uh, what you're saying uh, is part of the Asaba discussion. So, when we get to oh, okay. see better picture, okay. Uh, or I'll just mention uh, well, we did the husband, right? 
So we said two, two conditions for the husband. He gets a half if there is. He gets a half uh, if there is no kids. And he gets a quarter if there is kids. So this is the ayat of the Quran. وَلَكُمْ نِسْفُ مَا تَرْكَ أَزْوَاجُكُمْ إِلَّمْ يَكُلْ لَهُنَّ وَلَدٌ فَإِنْ كَانَ لَكُمْ وَلَدٌ Okay, so actually that's for the wife. Okay. okay. So, uh, this, this, this is the hardest part. Yeah, so that, 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 that part is really to the husband, right? What is this for my daughter? As well, 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 as So, uh, the wife. The wife has two cases. One quarter in the absence of children or grandchildren from the son. So again, the wife is pretty much identical to the husband in the cases. It's just a matter of the portions that are different. So, the husband went from half to a quarter. If there are kids, no kids is a half. And if there are kids, it's a quarter. The wife goes from one quarter to what? To one eighth. If there are kids, if there are no kids, the wife gets a quarter, and if there are kids, the wife goes to an eighth. Okay? So here the first condition, one quarter in the absence of children or grandchildren from the son. So if there are children, if they're the deceased, okay, the husband who passed away, he has a son, a daughter, or he has grandchildren, again, with no female intermediary, then his wife can only get, uh, his wife can get a quarter, okay? If there are no children or grandchildren. So in this case specifically, the wife is getting a quarter, the remainder is going to the father in three quarters, okay? Second case, the wife gets an eighth in the presence of children or grand grandchildren from the son. So if there are children, if there's a daughter or a son, or if there's grandchildren, uh, again, it has to be from the son with no female intermediary, then the wife gets one eighth, okay? Moving on, real daughters. Real daughters just means uh, they're not granddaughters. Okay, that's all it means. Uh, three cases. So if there's only one daughter, she gets a half. Okay? If there's only one daughter, she gets a half. So in this case, it happens to be that the, 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 the inheritors are a daughter and a father. The daughter takes a half. The father just takes the rest. Okay? If you have two daughters or more, then the two daughters, or however many more, five, six, seven, eight daughters, they all have to share two-thirds. They will share two-thirds of the inheritance. In this case, you have... Uh, two daughters and you have the brother of the deceased. So the two daughters takes two thirds and the brother of the deceased takes one third, the remaining. So if you have three daughters, it'll also be two thirds? Yep. Okay. Two daughters or more, however many more, they share two thirds. So, yeah. So here's, I guess, where I'm confused. Let's say you have this, um, but then you also have, like, the, the, let's say the woman's real sisters. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's in here or that's part of the 30% on the top? Before, or like, where does the sister get a cut? The sister? Did we cover sisters yet? Or we're still get the sisters, right? Oh. We're, we're, we didn't do sisters yet. Okay. It would be, I think, in this, but he's saying this is only this. Situation. These are the only people inherited. These are the only living people who are in yeah. the situation. Again, look, you know, right now to get a full picture, just going through each inheritor is going to be very difficult. Yeah. When we get through all of them and we actually do some practices, it will come together for you. You have to really kind of. Trust the process. And, and so what if also someone, is someone allowed to forgo the inheritance? Oh yeah, for sure. They're allowed to forgo their inheritance, yeah. And so is that on the responsibility of the will executor to ask? Like they have to say, you know, this is how much money is there, would you like it, or do you want to, like, how does that? No, that that's not how it should work. Yeah. The, execu uh, the executor of the estate, his job is to make sure everyone gets what they're entitled to. What they do with it afterwards is up to them. You do not. You should not be asking. Would you like it? It's not. Would you like it? He's already the owner. What do you mean? Would you like it? It's like, you know, it's like I have your property. I'm like, would you like it? What do you mean? It's yours. <laughs> it's like that. You know. It's like that. Yeah. Okay. Third case of the real daughter. So if with the daughter you have a son. Then they will get half the share of a son, and the son will make them a part of the asaba. So I told you guys that the son was not part of the male lawil furul. Do you guys remember the four? The son was not a part of them, right? The son was an asaba. He was a male relative who takes the remainder. So if you have a son with the daughter, 
then the son takes the remainder and the son will drag the daughter along with him and put her in the same group as him. And now the daughter becomes Asaba. And so in a case where you have a daughter and a son, the daughter now has to wait till the end and take the remainder with the son and can't take from the beginning. Do you guys understand? So like in the first two cases, the daughter, she's the will for rule. So she takes her share, which is, which, is, which is stipulated for her. It's either a half or two thirds. But as soon as there is a son, the son pulls her into his group of Asaba, and now she waits with the son to take the remainder after everyone else gets. Okay? So that's what happens. And when she's waiting with the son till the end as part of the Asaba, the son, okay, the way that it will be divided between the son and the daughter is that the son, each son will get twice the share of a daughter. So over here, for example, you have one daughter and two sons. Okay? So if you had two sons and one daughter, mathematically speaking, you would have to make the denominator five. Because each daughter gets half the share of a son. So if you say one for the daughter, then each son has to get two. So two plus two is four, and then one for the daughter is five altogether. Okay? So that's how it would work. So in this case, for example, you only had a daughter and you had two sons. So you would make your denominator five. The daughter gets one fifth. The two sons takes four fifths. Let's say there was only one son. It would be the daughter takes a third. Two, the one son takes two thirds, right? Because one third is half of uh, two thirds. Okay. And so if there's two sisters with one brother, with one son, then one one. One son, two sisters. Two daughters and one son? Yes, then it's then you would, then two thirds, one sixth, one sixth. Because they have two thirds. Would, yeah. no, then you would make it into quarters, right? Because each daughter would take one quarter and the son takes two quarters a half. That's right. Yeah. But, right. Two thirds, one sixth, one sixth is exactly the same. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. It's reduced. Yeah, it's reduced. <laughs> okay. Granddaughters. Granddaughters from the son only. Okay, so granddaughters are the willful rule. <clears throat> they have stipulated portions, but again, the granddaughters that we're talking about here are only from the son. They cannot have a female intermediary, otherwise they're ineligible. Okay, so it could be a granddaughter, the daughter of the son. It could be a great-granddaughter, great-great-granddaughter, doesn't matter, as long as there is no female intermediary. Six cases, okay, uh, this, this looks like a lot. It's pretty simple, straightforward. If there's only one granddaughter, she take, she'll take a half, okay? So here you have a granddaughter and you have a father. So the granddaughter is taking a half, the father is taking the other half, okay? You have two granddaughters or more, but you do not have real daughters as well. Real daughters means an actual daughter. So if you don't have actual daughters, you only, the deceased doesn't have, he doesn't have actual daughters, he only has granddaughters, and there is two or three of them, then the granddaughter will take the two-thirds. And then the remainder, you do whatever needs to be done with it. In this case, the grandfather is taking the rest. He's taking the one-third. Okay? Number three. If there is a real daughter, if there is a real daughter with the granddaughter, there's only one real daughter. In this case, the granddaughter is going to take only one-sixth, and the daughter is going to take one-half. That's going to make up two-thirds, and then the rest you do whatever you need to do with it. In this case, you have a brother, you give the rest to him. You give him the third. Okay? Yusuf, right? Yusuf, you're there? Uh, Ramadan, you're following? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, we're following so far? If with the granddaughter you have a real daughter, again, the granddaughter is only from the son, then the daughter takes a half, granddaughter is six, and the rest whatever you need to do. Number four. If you have two real daughters, or more than two real daughters, granddaughter cannot get anything. Granddaughter is deprived, nothing. Okay? In this case, you have two daughters. The two daughters will take two-thirds. The remainder, you do what you need to do with it. In this case, the father is taking the one-third. Okay? Number five. Number five, the granddaughter is being made into an asaba. Again, asaba means take the remainder. This will happen... And when with the granddaughter, you have a grandson on the same level or lower than the granddaughter. Okay? In that case, the granddaughter is made into an asaba. And again, you split between the granddaughter and the grandson where female gets half the share of a male. So what does it mean on the same level or lower than the same level? Let me just quickly do that for you guys.
Okay. Okay, so let's say in this situation, you only have this granddaughter alive and you only have this grandson alive. If that was the case, then this grandson is going to make her into Asaba, where she is now pooled with him because he's Asaba, the male relative that takes the remainder. She now is in the same group and has to wait with him to take the remainder at the end. And this is because they're at the same level. You see the same level of the relationship between, uh, between them and the deceased. The same could happen is if he's not there, but rather you go one step lower and you have the great grandson. You only have this one and you have this one. The same thing would happen where the great grandson would make her into Asaba and she's pulled together with him and they take the remainder after everyone else gets and you split between them where a female gets half the share of a male, okay? So it would happen where these two are alive only, or these two are alive only. If, is, if with her, okay, if with her, you had, let's say, a grandson, okay, who was, let's, let's say we were over here, okay, let's say we were over here, and I took it one step lower. So I had a great, uh, actually, I would have to be here, sorry. Uh, Let's say I had a grand, a great granddaughter with him. Okay, let's say just be maybe. Okay, and I had uh, another grandson here. Okay, let's say I only had her. And I had him. He's a grandson, great granddaughter. Over here, he cannot make her into Asaba because she's lower than him. They have to be either in the same level or the son is lower than the daughter. The grandson is lower than the granddaughter. Okay? <coughs> Don't worry about it. Well, so far? The grandson will make the granddaughter into Asaba if they're at the same level or the grandson is lower than the granddaughter. If the grandson is at a higher level than the granddaughter, he cannot make her into Asaba, rather she'll become the pride. Okay? Logistically, you have to update your will a lot with the birth of any... Uh, yeah, so, yeah, the only... The only... The only reason, like you said, that you're going to need to update the will is when someone's born. Because in all the cases where someone can possibly die that you're not anticipating, that's included in the will, because the will includes all scenarios, possible scenarios. But what it cannot include, obviously, is who's going to be born. So that, that will have to be updated again. Okay, number six. Will not inherit in the presence of a son. So if there's a granddaughter and there's a son, obviously, the, grand, uh, the granddaughter cannot receive any inheritance. And in this case that we have, we only have a granddaughter and a son. The son is taking everything. Okay, we're almost done, guys. Full sisters, okay. 
So full sisters means same father, same brother, uh, same father, same mother. Okay, same father, same mother, full sisters. They have five situations. So if there's only one full sister, she gets half. Okay, if there's only one full sister, she gets half. And in this case, with the full sister, you end up having an uncle, paternal uncle, and he's going to take the other half. If you have two full sisters, then they take, or more than that, then they take two-thirds. So you have, let's say, seven full sisters, they're all going to have to share two-thirds. And in this case, the other one-third is going to the paternal male cousin. Okay? With a full brother, they will become asaba. Okay, there's a bit of a mistake in the, sorry, it should not be written granddaughter, there should be written full sister. Just, just do. Okay. Okay, so never mind this, this was a mistake in the editing. So if with the grand, with the full sister, if with the full sister you have a full brother, then the full brother will make the full sister into an asaba. So, like, the same thing that I told you guys about the, the daughter and the granddaughter. Remember I told you guys, if the daughter has a brother, the brother's making her into Asaba. If the granddaughter has a brother, the brother's making her into Asaba. The same thing's happening here. If a full sister has a full brother, okay, the, then that full brother is also making the full sister into Asaba, where she now has to wait with the full brother to take the remainder after everyone else takes. In this case, there's only the two of them. So they take everything, two of them, and you divide between them the same way where female gets half the share of a male. So you have one full brother and one uh, full sister, so you put it into thirds, and you give the full brother two thirds and the full sister one third. Okay? Okay, this is a special case for the full sister. Uh, they will be made into asaba and receive the remainder with a real daughter or granddaughter. Okay, so if... Usually, the Asaba relatives that take the remainder are only going to be male. They're not going to be female. Okay? There are exceptional situations, which normally do not occur, where you do not have any of the male Asaba relatives who can take the remainder. And in that case, there are certain females that could still become Asaba relatives. Okay? And they can take the remainder. This is one of those cases where you do not have any of the male Asaba relatives to take the remainder, the full sister is, in, uh, in, in this scenario specifically, the full sister is capable of taking the remainder as an Asaba, even though she's not a male. And this will happen when, with the full sister, you have a real daughter or you have a granddaughter. Okay, and there's no other male Asaba relative that can take the remainder. In that case, the full sister will take the remainder. So she'll wait till the end. In this case, the daughter will take the half first, and the full sister will take the remaining one half, okay? Uh, number five, she will be, the full sister will be deprived in the presence of a son or a grandson. Again, the grandson has to be without any female intermediary. She can also be deprived if there's a father or a grandfather, it doesn't matter how high they go. So if you have a full sister, and along with the full sister who's inheriting with her is a son, uh, or a grandson, or a father, or a grandfather, then she can't get anything. So in this case, you only have a full sister and you only have a son. The son's taking everything, the full sister's getting that. Are you supposed to spell out how much? Like here, it's because the son and there's a grandson present, but all of the wealth is going to the son. There's no stipulation how much the grandson is entitled to? No, well, in this case, there is no grandson. There's only a son and a full sister. Uh, no, no, wait, uh, you know, but you said full sister deprived because yeah. there was a presence of a grandson. Of a son, of a son. Here is only a son. But it could be, it could be a, a grandson instead of a son. It would be the same thing. It could have, you could have had a grandson here instead of a son, and the same thing would have happened. The grandson would have taken everything, and the full sister would have been deprived. So this situation here. Oh, sorry, full sister. Excuse me, I'm thinking sister. No, 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 yeah. So look, whatever relative that's being written under the the under the horizontal line. Are the survivors okay? And and the re and the relationship, what they're what's mentioned in terms of the relationship, sister son, is to the deceased. It's not to each other. You have to remember that all the time. Or you can get confused. It's always to the deceased, not to them, not between themselves. Okay. Oh, we're almost there, guys. Almost there. Almost there. Okay. Uh, there's I think two more left. 
Consanguine sisters are half sisters, but only from the father's side, not from the mother's side, which means they share the same father, they don't have the same mother. Okay? So you have seven situations. If there's only one consanguine sister, she gets half. And here in this case, she gets half, and the paternal uncle will take the other half. Okay? Uh, if you have two or more consignment sisters, then they will take two thirds. They will have to share. You can have five, six, seven, eight, it doesn't matter how many. They take two thirds, not more than that. And here, the remainder will go to the nephew in this case. The nephew is taking the other one third. Okay? Yeah. If you have a full sister with the consignment sister, one full sister, then the consignment sister will take one sixth. And the full sister will take one half. And that will complete two thirds. The rest of it, you do whatever you need to. In this case, the uncle takes the rest of the one third. Okay? So if you have one full sister with the consignment sister, then you're gonna have you're gonna have one sixth for the consignment sister and one half for the full sister. If you have two full sisters or more than two full sisters, the consignment sister cannot get anything. The prior. You have two full sisters here, and they're going to take two thirds. Consignment sister cannot get anything. The remainder of it, you do what you need to. The cousin here, the male cousin, is taking the remainder one third. Okay? Can you go back one? But this doesn't equal 100%. Uh, it does. One half plus one sixth is two thirds, and one third. Half is, so you have one half, which is okay. three out of six, and then four out of six, and then. There are situations where it does not equal 100%, and that's, uh, we could do that if you guys are still, uh, have some energy left at the end. <laughs> okay, I did this right? Yeah, okay, number five. The consignment sister will be made into Asaba, just like the full sister, just like the daughter, just like the granddaughter, when they have a brother with them. The same thing with the consignment sister. If with the consignment sister you have a consignment brother, which means a half brother from the mother from the father's side, just like the consignment sister is a half brother from the father's side, you have a brother with her, okay? There, where uh, the, the she will she will be made into asaba, where she will take the remainder with the consignment brother, and she will have to wait till the end, just like the brother, and they will take the remainder. And again, here, female gets half the share of a male, so consignment sister here will take. Uh, this is a mistake also, it should have been one-third. A consignment sister should be one-third, and consignment brother two-thirds. Okay. Very poor editing. Uh, so, consignment sister one-third, consignment brother two-thirds, okay? Uh, will be made into asaba by real daughters or grand. This is also one of those exceptional situations. Remember I told you guys about the full sister? The full sister could be made into asaba if there are no male Asaba relatives to take the remainder, and so she meets an Asaba if there are daughters with her or granddaughters with her, the same thing happens to consignment sisters. Where if with the consignment sister you have a daughter or a granddaughter, again, granddaughter with no female intermediaries, then she could be made into an Asaba and take the remainder if there are no other male Asaba relatives to take the remainder. So in this case, you have a consignment sister and a daughter, the daughter is taking a half, the consignment sister is taking the remainder as a half. Okay. She will be deprived by sons and grandsons, father, grandfather, and also full brothers and sisters when they become asaba. If with the consignment sister there is a son, or there is a grandson, grandson obviously, uh, grandson also uh, without the intermediary of a daughter, right? Grandson, no intermediary of a daughter, or there is a son with her, or there is a father inheriting with the consignment sister, or there is a grandfather, or uh, in, that, in all of those cases, she cannot get anything. And also, if there's a full brother with the consignment sister, consignment sister, again, is the half-sister from the father's side. If there's a full brother and a full sister with her, and the full brother and sister happen to also be asaba, in that case, also the consignment sister is deprived, and she cannot get anything, okay? We're almost done. Okay, the mother has three cases. So, number one, one-sixth in the presence of children or grandchildren. So if there are children, means, meaning that the deceased has a son inheriting with the mother or a daughter inheriting with the mother, or grandchildren, meaning the, uh, um, 
grandson or granddaughter or great 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 doesn't matter as long as there's no female intermediary in that case she gets one sixth or if there are two or more brothers and sisters and it doesn't matter whether the brothers and sisters are full brothers and sisters they're half brothers and sisters from the father's side or they're half brothers and sisters from the mother's side it doesn't matter if there are two or more brothers and sisters it could be one brother one sister it could be two sisters two brothers it doesn't matter two or more uh, then she also gets one sixth and not more than that so in this case, there's a son, so she's getting a six, the son's taking the rest, five, six, okay? One third of the whole inheritance in the absence of the aforementioned people. All of the people that are mentioned, son, who are mentioned, son, uh, children, grandchildren, brothers and sisters. If none of these people are there, okay, then she takes, she takes one third of the whole thing. So in this case, she's taking a third, and the remainder is going to the father. And the father is taking two thirds. Okay, one third of the remainder after the portion uh, given to any spouse. This will only occur in two scenarios where the inheritors are husband and both parents or wife and both parents. So this can only happen in these two scenarios. When the inheritors are the husband, father, mother, or the wife, father, mother. Here I wrote here the, uh, the husband, father, mother. So when you have a situation, husband, father, mother, or wife, father, mother, First, you give to the husband or the wife. In this case, you give to the husband. And because there are no children, the husband's taking a half. Then after the half is given to the husband, the mother is taking one third of the remainder. So what's one third, what's one third of a half? Six. Yeah, I think I might have made a mistake there. Uh, yeah, so if one, what's one third of a half? It's one sixth. Six. Yeah, so I didn't make a mistake. Okay. So one third of a half is one sixth, and then the remainder is going to the father, one third. Okay. This is the last one, grandmother, and then and then we're done with the wood for all. Okay. So the grandmother has three cases also. So the grandmother takes one sixth where there is one grandmother or many grandmothers. And if you guys remember that previous diagram I did, you can have multiple grandmothers that are inherited. Okay? It could be paternal grandmother, it could be maternal grandmother, as long as you don't have an invalid grandfather in between, she's valid to receive. So one sixth, when there is one or many grandmothers, and it doesn't matter whether it's a paternal or maternal, as long as they are true, they are valid, they are, they are uh, eligible. And that's only going to be the case when there is no un ineligible grandfather as an intermediary. So here, you have a case where you have a grandmother and a grandfather. The grandfather is the husband of the grandmother in this case. So the grandmother is taking one sixth, and the remainder is going to the grandmother. Okay, a grandfather, sorry, five sixths. More than one wife? Mm -hmm. Then you have to give to all of them. Yeah. They're all they're all gonna share, they're all gonna share the portion they're receive, they're entitled to. So for example, I told you guys the wife gets one quarter when there's no children. So if you have three wives, three wives share one quarter. And the same thing, if you have uh, the wife gets one eighth, if there are children, three wives share one eighth. You don't give one eighth to each. It's, it's three wives sharing one eighth. That's how it works. All grandmothers will be deprived of the presence of the mother. If the mother is alive, no grandmother can receive. It doesn't matter if the, if the grandmother is paternal or maternal. It does not matter. The grandmother cannot receive if the mother is alive. Okay? In this case, you have a mother, she's getting a sixth, grandmother is automatically gone, the rest of, the rest of it is going to the son, five sixths, okay? Paternal grandmothers will be deprived by the father and the grandfather if he is the link for the grandmother to the deceased. So, if you have a paternal grandmother, which means a grandmother from your father's side, if the father is alive, that paternal grandmother cannot receive. If the father is dead, then yeah, she possibly could receive. Okay? And again, if there is the link of a grandfather to that grandmother, let's say she's a great grandmother. So let's say she is the mother of the father of your father, and you happen to be the deceased. So there is a grandfather who is your um, your grand, let's say your grandfather Okay, so it's his mother who is supposed to receive. 
So there is a link of your grandfather between her and you because she is the mother of the father of your father. So in that case, if that your grandfather is alive, she's also going to be deprived because he is the link to her, for her to you. So if he's alive, then she can't receive either. Okay? Grandmothers of a closer relation will also deprive grandmothers of a further relation to the deceased. So if you have, for example, a great grandmother who's eligible and a great grandmother that's also eligible, the closer one will deprive the further one. So the great grandmother can't receive if the grandmother is getting it. Right? The great grandmother is further. Okay, so this is the Lamin Furul. I'm going to give you guys, we're almost done. We're almost done, and then we can actually do some practice. And you guys will understand what's going on. <clears throat> I hope there's no mistakes in this. I should check it over. Guys, just please stay for the practice so that way you'll you'll feel like you got something and then if you need to go and the, the rest of it is okay. Okay, let's cover the asabat and then we're gonna do the practice. The asabat is very simple, okay? The Asabat are the male, Asabat in Arabic means male relatives, okay? So the paper that I gave you is just what we just covered everything on the slide right now. That's what's on the paper. The 12 relatives, the 12 Dabil Furut with stipulated portions, 8 males, 4 females, all of their conditions, that's on the paper. Okay, that's all it is. Asabat are not on the paper. So the Asabat, we do have to look at the screen to know what the asabat, who the Asabat are. So the Asabat, Asabat means male relatives. So, the male relative who are residual inheritors on their own are four categories in sequence of priority. So there are four categories of asaba. Okay? What this means is that you have category one. If you have category one, category two cannot get. And obviously category three and four cannot get either. If you don't have category one, then you go to category two. And if you have category two, then three and four cannot get. That's how it works. If you don't have one and two, then you go to three. If you don't have one, two, three, then you go to four. Well, as soon as you have the higher one, the lower ones are gone. Okay? And again, within each category, the highest relative, meaning the closest to the deceased, will deprive everyone else in that category. So you'll see how, as it, how it works, okay? This is the first. These are the, this is the Asafa group, and if they're there, then two, three, four are gone. So this is the first asaba category, and the first asaba category of male relatives are the progeny of the deceased. Son, grandson, great-grandson, great-great-grandson. So you can see the diagram how it goes. All of the names in orange are the asaba relatives. Son, grandson, great-grandson, and you can go as low as you want. Notice there is no female intermediary. You cannot have female intermediary, right? They're all males. If you have a son, grandson is gone. Great-grandson is gone. Everyone else is gone. Don't have the son, go to the grandson. And after that, everyone under the grandson, they're all gone. Don't have the grandson either, then you go to the next one. That's how it works, okay? So if you don't have anyone from category one, asaba relative, then you go to category two. Category two is father, grandfather, great-grandfather, however high you want to go. Again, notice no female intermediaries. Same thing over here. You don't have category one, go to category two. Category two, you have the father, everyone else above is gone. You don't have the father, go to the grandfather. You have the grandfather, everyone else above is gone. Same thing, same sequence. You don't have category one or category two, go to category three. This is how category three works. Category three is the brother of the deceased, but it has to be through the father. It can't be through the mother. Again, you see there is no female. The reason why I wrote the father is so that you can see there's no female intermediary. Because if it was through the mother, then that would not count. Okay? It has to be through the father so that there's no female in between. So the third category is the brother, the nephew, meaning the son of the brother, the son of the nephew, meaning 
again, and you can keep going, great, great, you know, grandson of the nephew, and again, they're all males. Is okay? The, is the deceased paternal uncle? No, paternal brother. Or it could be full brother. Oh, it's brother of the deceased, right? Yeah. It's brother of the deceased. So it could be full brother, or it could be it could be the consignuin brother, the brother from the father's side. But it cannot be uterine brother, because that would be from the mother's side. It has to be either a full brother, or it has to be a consignment brother. From the father's side, or for full brother from the mother and father's side, okay? So you have brother, nephew, son, son of nephew, keep going lower. If you have the brother, everyone else below is gone. You don't have the brother, go to the nephew. Right? If you don't have the nephew, go to the son and you keep going. That's category three. So you don't have category one, which is the son all the way below, grandson, great grandson, blah, blah, blah. You don't go to category, then you don't have category two, which is the father, grandfather, big brother, all the way to the top. And you don't have category three, which is the brother, nephew, son of the nephew, all the way. Then you go to category four. Category four is the uncle, cousin, son of the cousin. So this is how category four works. As you see, again, there is no female intermediary. The way they are linked to the deceased is all through males. So you have the father going to the grandfather, and the grandfather's second son happens to be the uncle of the deceased, right? The uncle, the cousin, the son of the cousin, the grandson of the cousin, the great-grandson. All of the people in orange are the Asaba relatives, okay? This is category four. So you don't have category one, two, or three, go to four. If you have the uncle, everyone below is gone. You don't have the uncle, go to the cousin. If you have the cousin, everyone below is gone. You don't have the cousin, go below. That's how it works, okay? That's category one, two, three, four. I, again, bullet point over here, I, I, I just uh, repeated what I, what I just told you guys already. Closer male relatives in each category will deprive farther ones in the same category, okay? Closer male relatives in each category will deprive farther ones in the same category. Male relatives will, with multiple links of relation to the deceased will deprive those with only one link, one link of relation to the deceased when they're in the same level of relation. What does this mean? So if you have, let's say, uh, the only Asaba relative is a brother, two brothers. You have a full brother and you have a consignment brother. So they're both Asaba because they're both related only through males. Consignment means a brother only from your father's side and full brother from your mother and father. But because the full brother has two links of relation from the father and the mother, the full brother gets consignment brother nothing. That's how it works also, okay? Then you have these asaba. This is this is also something I already told you guys. Just repetition. There is a second type of asaba group. Okay, these are exceptional situations. Like not exceptional. Actually, this could be quite common. There are. Remember, I told you guys there are four groups of women who become asaba with their brothers. Remember, I told you guys. So there were the daughters, the granddaughters, full sisters, consignment sisters, half sisters from the father's side. These women, when they have brothers with them, the brothers turn them into asaba and they have to wait with their brothers to take the remainder at the end. I told you guys that. So it's okay. If you don't remember. Uh, because of their brothers also turning, okay? And these, and these women, all of them, they have the same uh, share amounts. They get half when they're alone and they get two-thirds when they're two or more. And they all have the same amounts of share, okay? The last, also I told you guys, exceptional situation is when you have no male asaba relatives, okay, then these two groups of women can be asaba and they can take the remainder in specific situations. Full sisters, consignment sisters. That can only happen when they have daughters with them or granddaughters with them, okay? When they have daughters with them or granddaughters with them. Okay, now we are good to do practice and you guys will put everything to the test. Yeah. Maybe I, if I, I get this answer question, I'll bring you to it. Because all the scenarios, like, you know, it's tough because uh, I'd say 99% don't apply. Like, to an individual like us. Anyway, if this happens, this, this, whatever. Oh, they will. If I watch, I'm going to show you. We're going to do real examples with all of you guys. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So, so my question is, like, here it says, let's say, full sisters, right? So it says, we'll be deprived of the presence of a son or a grandson. Does that mean that then if there's a son, then the sisters of the deceased don't inherit? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So, okay. I think I got it. Okay, let's do some practice. The first problem I'm going to do on the board is my own inheritance. If I die right now. Look, this is going to be very, very simple to solve 
the inheritance for yourself. This is the sequence. What you want to do when you're solving an inheritance <coughs> problem, you want to go through the list of 12 people. And you want to write down each and every one of the 12 people that exist for you. Do I have a father? Do I have a grandfather? Do I have brother and brothers, sisters? Do I have a husband? Do I have a wife? Just go through all of it. And you just write them down, each one that exists. That's, that's what you do. So, <clears throat> so what you're going to do is, you're going to go through the 12, and you're going to write each one that exists for you, and then you're going to write also for sun, because the sun is not part of the 12, but you're going to do the sun also. And that should be enough for you to the sun part of the 12? Because it's Asaba, yeah. and that's not how it is. You have the handout for Asaba? I didn't make it. No. I, didn't, I could make it. Before I actually carry out, I just want to make sure there's no mistake on this paper that I gave you. There's some complicated situations that, you know, my mother, she passed away, and so yeah. I'm having to deal with all this, yeah. and her will was just 50-50, yeah. okay, that's what she made, yeah. and uh, when I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, okay, in a situation, of, let's say her pension, okay, she's old Quebec pension, and the Quebec government says that, okay, that pension can go towards the husband, meaning not 100%, but like, no, the husband will carry on. Let's say she has a work pension. She's owed that money. And so she can stipulate, I think, one here, um, like one person, like if I pass, then this person will get my money, right? I guess what complicates things for me is it, it, like the person who's executing the will, right? If, if I'm just giving a theoretical example, if she put that, okay, I want my daughter to get the pension from the work, that goes there. Then it's up to the daughter to say, okay, put it back in the pool and let's rearrange it, yeah. right? And the same thing, let's say, for, for the husband. If the husband's now getting an extra, I don't know, $500 a month, right? Well, do you see what I'm getting yeah, I think it becomes that. really, that's what happens. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. Because I, I, that money you can't pull, it's, it's monthly. And are you going to say, okay, out of that $500, we will so, take so, half? So this is, this is what I was saying, right? This is why it's upon the person passing away before passing away. Because like it is our responsibility to educate ourselves and be aware of what Allah is requiring from us in our life. This is a part of Islam. This is a part of what Allah is requiring from us is to know how to die and is to know how to take care of things once we're gone. So if that was our responsibility. And unfortunately, there are many people that are not. Or, you know, not, I wouldn't say that people don't care, but people don't think that I could die any time. Mm -hmm. You know? And so when things happen suddenly, then things happen, and then you have a situation to deal with. This is why the people that are always, you know, uh, actively thinking of their hereafter are going to be prudent. You know, they're going to be proactive. They're going to be, you know, preparing for time. And this is why we're having these seminars. You know? So hopefully I become one of those people also that, you know, we take action when these things happen. And like you said, when these things happen, and, uh, you know, the money is going, like you said, pension, you know, Property value. Exactly. At that point, when the person that passed away didn't make any will and didn't, you know, speak to the inheritors, the family members, uh, to clearly identify what they want and make sure it's, you know, according to Islam. At that point, after the person is gone, it's up to the relatives uh, to be worried about the relative that passed away and to think, you know, it's our mother, it's our father, it's our brother, it's our sister. You know, it's not about our money. It's about making sure that we do things in a way that. She's not being questioned. So that understanding needs to be there, you know, between. And I had uh, issues also when my mom passed away. It wasn't easy, you know, like, because uh, there is there's a mentality. And I'll just mention this right now. Um, so when, let's say, um, someone passes away, they didn't make a will, uh, there was no... Uh, discussion with the inheritors or anything, you don't need to divide everything and give everyone their actual share from every type of asset, whether it's liquid or not. What you do need to do is, uh, is inform every single rightful inheritor of what they're entitled to. And if there is an agreement between all of the inheritors, which 
oftentimes happens that they're ready to relinquish it to one person and let that person use their judgment to do whatever they want with it and make them the owner of it. Then there's no need to divide anything. And then it could be done, you know, however that person chooses, uh, you know, with his discretion, you know, whoever that person is appointed. So that's a way to do it. This, this is what happened in my situation where and then all this stuff is irrelevant then. No, it is relevant because someone could want their share. You know, someone could say, and you can't say no. And you know, it's their right. Okay. Someone can want their share, you have to give them the share. But if they're okay with that person deciding what to share, then that's fine. Sorry, say it again. If they're okay with that person deciding what to share, like if everyone so, so like the way it has to work is everyone if you're going to make one person, you know, the one who's going to determine how it's divided and guess what, you have to make him the owner of your yeah, share. Yeah. Everyone has to kind of just make him the owner of their share. At that point, you can't now start objecting, questioning what he's doing because you made him the owner of your share. Also. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to realize that. Are there important work to be joint? Jointly? Yes. If something happens to one, it doesn't matter to the other. Oh, I don't understand. Like if you're making a will, yeah. you jointly, jointly, and you know, if you have three, four kids, yeah. if something goes wrong, you know, something or not, or this, it automatically goes to the other. Yeah, so that that yeah, so that's part of the will where there's different scenarios or something happens to you. Okay, so let's uh, uh, just one. I throughout like how does the asabat uh, divvy up compared to the twelve here, uh, like in terms of the percentage? Like there's no percentage for them. There's just remainder. They're the remainder. They're the remainder. They take remainder. So there's no percentage. It could be whatever. Were <laughs> all these scenarios equal 100%? All of the ones I gave? Yeah, all of them are 100%. So then what's left for the... the In all of the scenarios I used, yeah. you, you, didn't re, you didn't know because I didn't explain to you. Yeah. In all the scenarios I used, I used Asabat for all of them. So they ended up taking the remainder in all of them. Okay, okay. so that way you always came up to 100 Oh, the sun was in that. Yeah, I was. Yeah, every, if you look at, that's you, what you, you can now that you know us about, you can look at. I mean, you don't you don't have it on the paper, but if you look at the slides, you'll see every single one has. Why is like paternal yeah. uncle? You just put it. Paternal uncle us about. You took it. Yeah. Cousin, nephew, you know, yeah. father, son. They always they're all us about. They always they all have it. Okay, so I'm gonna do my own. Okay, so from the twelve, these are the people that are alive for me right now. Okay, and I told you guys do the twelve. And, and, and do your son also, if you have a son or grandson. So do those also. And you have to update it every time someone passes away or it automatically... When you make a will, when you make a will, uh, usually all scenarios are included where this person passed away first, this one first, that one first, the second, third, or whatever, everything's included. Usually the only, like I said, the only way you need to modify it is if someone's born. Those words actually spells out my it means dead person. Okay. It's like a meme and a yeah, and just don't write the dots. Okay. Then you write the people under uh, under who are inherited. So before I write them, father, grandfather, wife, son. Let me ask you guys, can my grandfather inherit? The grandfather is paternal, it's the father of my father. Can he inherit? Oh yeah, but great grandmother. <coughs> yes, you can. This is the problem. Oh, there's a line of woman. Okay. 
Okay. Grandfather, can you hear it? Yes. Look at look at grandfather. Everyone look at grandfather. Father's alive. No. Father's alive. Again, correct. There you go. Okay. So I put X right there. Okay. Everyone look at grandmother. Can she get can she get right now? No. All grandmothers would be the father's still alive. So both, I have two grandmothers, paternal and maternal. I have both. Can, are both of them deprived? Yes? Yes. Wrong answer. Hmm? It says paternal grandmother would be the so all grandmother deprived of presence yeah. of mother. But I have both. I have a maternal also. Okay. Only the paternal only the paternal is going is going to be deprived by the father. I have both. I have paternal and a maternal. What about the maternal? What about her? Can she get? Yes or no? Yes. She would have only been deprived if my mother was alive. But my mother's not alive, so she's gonna get. Right? So I do have I have a maternal. I'll put a check there. Uh the rest of the people will inherit. Now let's actually work it out. So I'm gonna write here who's actually getting, right? I'm gonna write maternal. Okay, four people. So you guys are going to give me all the answers. How much is my wife getting? One quarter in the absence of children. No, no, one eight. One eight. We have consensus or not? One eight. One eight. One eight. Yeah, that's right. One eight. You're not getting more than that. That's it. <laughs> How much is my father getting? One six in the presence. One six in the presence of us. All right, perfect. Is he, get, is he getting more than one six? Is he getting one six plus asafa? Is he doing that? Is he getting one six plus remainder? No. No. Right. He can't be asafa because I have a son. My son is the asafa, and my son is ahead ahead in line over my father. Remember, I told you guys category one, two, three, four. One was son. Two was father. So the, one is there. Two can't. He's not going to be asafa. So he can only get one six, right? One sixth, all right, I'm writing that down. How much is my maternal grandmother getting? One sixth. One sixth. That's right, one sixth. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Any disagreements with that? Anyone have a disagreement? Uh, how did you get one eighth for my wife? For my wife? Because I have a son. If I have kids, then she gets a she gets an eighth. If there was no kids, it'd be a quarter. Yeah. Everyone agree with the maternal grandmother, one six? Yeah. yeah. How much is my son getting? The rest. The rest. The rest, that's right. How much is the rest? So now go back to the beginning of the seminar. You have one eighth from category A, and you have a six from category B. What denominator do we want to use? Twenty-four. But you can't go wrong with twenty-four. Yeah, exactly. I just, I just wrote the principles so you guys you don't have to do the math. But yeah, 24 is the, is the denominator we want to use. So how much out of 24 is remaining for my son? Four, eight, eleven, so 13. 13? 4, 8, 11, 13. 24 minus 11, 13. 13? Okay, 13 out of 24. All right, so now I know. If you want to get the percentage, just one divided by six. That's it. And no other family members. Nothing else. That's it. Okay, that's it. Who's next? Anyone else want to add? Yeah, no problem. Of course. Let's let's right. 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 uh, One second. One second. I think that's why it was so confusing because it was paternal uncle. Well, I, I, was, I was reassuring you guys throughout, but, but trust I was really the trust is really the thing now makes sense because like I, I when I saw I was like, man, there's twelve people that are getting inherited. That's why I saw them all. I told you that's trust each other. Trust trust. That's why it makes sense. So, so who do we have here? Go through all of them. Go through all of them. So father, father, yeah, let's see. Um, sister, which one? Uh, 
kind of blood sister. You, you full? Know? Yeah, full, full sister. sister. Okay. And you have to also say how many, right? One. Yeah. Uh, white. Okay. How many? He's like, no comment. And for now, son. son. Yeah. And uh, three daughters. Three daughters. Okay, perfect. Anything else? No. So, a question does in my situation, my father was adopted and his mother is still alive, mm -hmm. but she's not related by blood. It no, was his father. No. That's not. Okay. So, yeah, do you have relatives? Okay. Go down our list. So, you're sure there's no one else from the list, right? You want to yeah. everyone? No, that's it. Okay, perfect. So, let's do it. Okay, let's write them down. So, Monica, in your example, uh, only your son's share would change once in shall you have other sons and daughters or, yeah. the, or the other shares stay the same for your father? In my you, case, uh, the, it, yeah, the, only, the only thing which would change was that the 13 out of 24 that he got, oh, yeah, that's right. no, they would, it would just be as many more. So if I had daughters, it would change. If I had just more sons, they just it would, would just be the 13 out of 24 share between them. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let's. How much is your wife getting? One eighth. One eighth, because you have kids. Okay. Let's give your let's give your father. How much is your father getting? Uh, one six six. One six is right. Okay. Let's see. Uh, your three daughters. How much are they getting? Two thirds. Yeah. Two thirds. Two thirds. Yeah. 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 Where's the five and the one son? Both sisters. The prime. She's the prime. She's the prime. Okay. So now, what denominator do we want to use here? Six and eight? Let's go 24, right? Yeah. All right. 24. What's remaining out of 24? And you don't want six, one, eight, four. So 17. So 17. 17. 17 remaining? Yeah. Okay, so I should have wrote this differently, but I'll just put it in. 17. Now you have a little bit of complication here now. Okay, so when you have three daughters and a son, how many portions are you dealing with? Oh, the son is half, because the son is half and then the others, the three are half. The daughters three take the wrong the daughters get half of half of the son. Half of the son. Exactly. So how many portions are we dealing with? We're dealing with five. Two for the son, one for each daughter. Right. So you have five portions. Can you divide 17 by five? No, you can't. So now, yeah, so now, we, now we're into the second discussion of the seminar. If you guys are interested, we can move on to it. If not, do it. So there is a whole... That's the, basically the math uh, discussion of the seminar. And it's part. It's continuing. Continuing. Sorry. Uh, if you guys want, we can continue that. But for now, so basically, your daughters, three daughters and son, are sharing seventeen out of twenty-four. But you have to you have to know that from the seventeen out of twenty-four, your <coughs> son is getting twenty percent of that, one fifth. From the seventeen out of twenty-four. Your son is getting 20% of that, and your three daughters are sharing 80% of the 17 out of 24. Son sharing 20%? He's taking 20%, one fifth of the 17 out of 24, and your three daughters are sharing 80% of the 17 out of 24. He's saying two fifths. He's saying two fifths, 40%. Yeah. 
Uh, he's he's uh, saying double what they are, right? So two percent is one fifth, right? Yeah. So yeah, because um, so there, like I said, three daughters, and if you have son who has twice the amount of a daughter, yeah, yeah, he has two fifths. Okay, so why does get one fifth? Four percent. They're one percent. Two fifths, not one percent. Yeah. So forty percent for the son. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm not perfect. Uh, three daughters, uh, for, and the, the others are getting sixty percent of the son. Yeah. Okay, so there is a whole. I mean, you can, you don't you guys don't have to do the whole math part because you could use a calculator. But you're going to do what? Yeah. The, the, the daughters are getting two percent. Okay. So it's pretty simple. Remember, as soon as you have a son, it eliminates a lot of stuff. But you should still write everyone down before you eliminate anyone before. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I have <laughs> Wife. Yeah. Uh, two daughters. Two daughters. One son. Two sisters. And a mother. No one else? No. Not one else. Grandmother? Grandmother. Okay. Grandfather, no. No, it's not. Uh, okay, perfect. Oh. Let's break them down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's give to your wife first. <laughs> wife always gets first. One eight. Okay, one eight. One sixth for the father. One sixth for the father. Yeah, okay. Let's give to your two sisters. Do they get anything? No. No, no they're right because they're sons. Yeah. Okay, mother. Okay. One sixth. One sixth. Two daughters and son. They will take this remainder. So let's make it a point for again. How much do you have left? Six. Four. Uh, four. Eight. Six. Eleven. 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 So Thirteen out of twenty-four. Okay. Thirteen out of twenty-four. Now, how are you going to define this? Is that you have two daughters yeah. and one son, so again, the same. Uh, 40%. Half yeah, so half yeah, so half, half here, 50% of the son and 50% of the daughter, right? 50% of this. So 6.5 and 3 parents. 50% here. And that 50% they share between the two, the two daughters. Okay. <laughs> So for the two daughters, or fifty percent for the Fifty percent of this, thirteen out of twenty-four. For the fifty percent for the son. Yeah, fifty percent of thirteen out of twenty-four for the son, yeah. and fifty percent of the thirteen out of twenty-four for the two daughters. So they split that in half. Oh, okay. Right. 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 And so what you when when your parents pass away, then you have to agree. Like, you know, you said you would. You would spell it out in the will. Yeah. Okay. Anyone that's gonna that might pass away before you anticipate, mm -hmm. you can spell that out in the will for you know x amount of scenarios. But anyone that's gonna be born, you probably have, you're gonna have to add that. It's not that difficult. No, that now it makes sense. No, no. All the scenarios, two scenarios, like, scenarios. Well, <laughs> your second cousin. Yeah, it's like well, let's we have to teach it. It's like I'm confused. Consignment brothers. Yeah. I'll just put brother. One, one sister. One sister. Sister. 
Containment systems. Containment systems. Okay. Let's skip this. Yes, I did. <laughs> and what is usually. I like this. This is a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's do this. The white first. One eight. One eight. Okay. Okay. Let's give. Let's give the, the sisters and the brothers here. Full sister, how much? Nothing is this time. It's this time. So if the sister can't get, what about the companion brothers and sisters? They don't get it. They don't get it. <laughs> Mahrum. <laughs> and the daughter's son will take the rest. So what, seven, eight? Do you have your thing here? So you have out of three. So if you have seven out of eight, Daughter son will take 66% two thirds of this. 66% of this. Daughter will take 33%. I get the 1%. Huh? So, so that's five. five. It's a piece. It's a lot of things. Yeah. 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 That's what I did out of this. <clears throat> so I have my father. Okay. I have um, uh, five. Um, I have my father and my mother. I have five full sisters. Yeah. And I only have my paternal grandmother. Paternal grandmother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you put my mother, right? Mother, okay. Well, uh, let's. You sure. Let's, as we see, no way. That will be a bit in the Yeah, inshallah yeah. first. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Okay, so go ahead, full sisters. How do you have to answer my sisters to get the remainder? So how much did you get to your sisters? So let's look yeah. at the grandmother first, paternal grandmother. What about her? Is she going to get? No. She's deprived because of the presence of the mother, though. Yeah, and the father. And the father. She would have been deprived by the father or the mother, in both yeah. cases. Okay, so she's the price. Yeah. And then? And then the... Four sisters? My four sisters. How much you gotta get? They'll, they'll, they'll get half worth of what I get. So, it'll be... Uh, what? No, you're not even dying. No, I'm dying. I'm gonna take it with me. I'm going down with it. I'm gonna take the baby ones with me. I just woke up from my chicken. <laughs> um, so this is two thirds of this, two or more. That will be getting two thirds? Yes, it's two thirds of two or more. Yeah, two thirds of two or more. Yeah. How much do you want to give to the five full sisters? And none of my sisters are going to work. It doesn't matter. Okay, yeah. So two thirds. Uh -huh. so how, much, how much did you say? Uncle had two sisters. It's two thirds. Two thirds? Yeah. 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 Okay, and your mother? Um, would be one six or not? One six, that's right. Okay. And your father? Same. Not same. No. Yes. He'll get the remainder. 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 Father takes yeah, remainder. remainder. Okay? Because look, here he's Asaba. Remember, I told you guys, he only takes one sixth if he's Asaba. If he's Asaba, then he takes the remainder. Takes the remainder. So we would make this out of six. Yeah. It happens to be one sixth. And uh, how, much is, how much is your father taking? One sixth. One sixth. It just happens to be. You know, but it's remaining. Yeah. 
Okay. So what are the four categories of us? Yes. again, the first one was son, grandson. Yeah, grandson. son, grandson. Second is father, grandfather, big grandfather. Third is brother, nephew, and the son of the nephew. In that order. Yeah. And the fourth one. And the fourth the is the uncle, the cousin, son of the cousin, grandson of the cousin. Yeah. All paternal. One question. Um, so if there's a father and, and uh, let's say he has a son, so all the you know, brothers, sisters, whatever, no father, and you have no grandfather, no father, whatever. It just has a, 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 a daughter and a son. Does that mean the son gets 75% and the daughter gets 25%? Uh, so, no, that's too much. If you only have a daughter and a son, the, the son gets twice the amount of the daughter. So it'd be 66, 33. Okay. Now, it's up to the, the son if he wants to get 50, right? That's not allowed. Yeah, that's his right. He's giving. He's that's his ownership. He's giving away. But what he's entitled to is. He gets let me let me just explain this also because a lot of people make this objection against Islam that we're you know we're a patriarchal religion and we're we're misogynistic and all this stuff. And, you know. So in Islam, this is something which is very important that we understand, especially with these liberal values creeping into you know our every part of life. In Islam. We have a very strong importance for family. And in that family, in Islam, our belief is that you have to have the father as the, as the leader of that household, and especially the breadwinner of that household. Okay. The woman can work and make money, but she can't be the one that's the primary breadwinner and who you're relying on to get through life. Yeah, she can contribute, that's fine. She's not supposed to be the one you're relying on for any necessity of life. So the father is the one. And so every male in a Muslim society is one day going to be the father, where he needs money. So who needs more money in life, the male or the female? It's the male, because he needs to earn. And he needs to take, not earn for himself, for his pleasures. He needs to earn for his wife, for his kids. You know, and if he has dependents, you know, it could happen where he has dependents, other relatives that are incapable of working, that are handicapped, he might end up being responsible shara'an for them also from a shari perspective. The, the male is the one that needs money because he has the responsibility of making money and providing for everyone. And so in all of these cases, you're giving the male more money because he actually needs to actually provide. The woman is not responsible to provide for anyone, not even herself. Why does she need money? So, yeah. Now, she's expanding. In, in this case, she does get more. In this case, yeah. Well, if we want a society with women living independently, then sure, yeah, she needs money. But is that what we want? We don't want that. Right? I mean, if you add up uh, two characters, yeah. is anyone else that wants? Uh, uh, can I invite some friends? <coughs> So I have a wife. Granddaughter. Daughter? Yeah. Yeah. Mother. Three brothers. Three brothers. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You sure you want for everyone? No sisters, right? Okay, let's do it. Yeah. So I think I had it on. Okay, so how much you give it to your wife? One eighth. One eighth. Okay. And my daughter will get one half. One half, that's right. Your mother? Uh, one sixth. That's right. And my brothers would, I mean, would they split the rest? Like, uh, That's right, they're Asaba, they go right here. So here you can make it out of 24 also. Yeah, so they would get 5 out of 24. 16. 5, right? So 5 out yeah, of 24. Three. That's 12, uh, 16, 19. Yeah, 5. Right. And then you have that mathematical problem where you have to give each one 33%. 32% of 5 out of 30, 24 for each. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Uh, now it makes sense to me. I was I was lost. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's too complicated. But now this helps make it more complicated. Is that what? There is more exceptional situations which we could cover if you guys are interested. So one question about the ask They are divided equally no matter who they are. Uh, wait, I forgot to give them the will things. Call them. Call them. Sorry. Uh, when he said that it's only one category, oh, but, one but yes, you have the sons, they, they are in the category, they, they, they uh, share the rest. Just basically these 12 and one category. So that's basically do you do? Do you write the uh, will? The first yeah. category. Do I write will? Yeah. Uh, you do. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't make sense for me to do it. You go to a notary. Uh, no, but if you do like the uh, like the Islamic side, then that goes to. Well, we said it. Okay, you know, you know. Oh, yeah. So for the Islamic. So if you so have, have a couple minutes, I just want to explain this. Otherwise, uh, yeah. just do the Because it's pretty important. I'm sorry, man. Abdullah has gone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what you're so when you sit down with an order, you just tell them, look, I want this, yeah. and I just tell them, this. Okay. I gave you French? Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. I didn't about this. So you would literally tell them, you would tell them this kind of thing that my granddaughters are going to get half by two thirds if I get half. Okay. So I just take this one. Yeah. So let me just mm -hmm. quickly go through this for you guys. It's pretty important, I guess. So what happens when you don't uh, get your your will notarized? Is that there could be two possible situations. One is that you have a will that was like handwritten in the presence of witnesses, and then um, when the person passes away, that will has to get probated. So it has to be like officially recognized by the court. And so you either have to go to the notary again, or you have to go to the court, and it can become more expensive and more time consuming before you get to the process of being able to just take huge hassle. Yeah, yeah. And and also like they could can, they could deem the, the will uh, illegible uh, or like, you know, it doesn't confirm to laws or many different things because the language is not right. Mm -hmm. And you can also obviously get lost or destroyed. It could become, you know, very frustrating in different ways. So for us, the will is not a Muslim thing where we're talking about, you know, one third of the will extra because it's already going to be distributed according to Islamic uh, law, right? Uh, we're living in a non-Muslim country. If it goes to the court, automatically it's non-Islamic. So the will for us is not a mustahab thing anymore. It's more of a wajib thing. It's not a matter of the one third extra. This is a matter of the entire inheritance making sure it's done properly. So the thing is necessary. And if it gets notarized, then uh, it's official. They, they keep the original for you. It's never going to, not Allah will keep it safe, but they have you know vault for it. And it also gets registered in the Quebec uh, like notary, some register thing. So they have it registered that it does exist. and. Because the lawyer did it, the language will be right, and it'll be very easy to facilitate and everything like that. And also, like for, you can also decide you should appoint, you know, who's going to be the executor of the estate, who's going to distribute, and also like where you want to be buried and how you want to be, you know, how your body, how you want your body to be handled. All these things are important, especially for like non Muslims and stuff, uh, new Muslims, sorry, and their families are not Muslim is very important because things can go wrong in many different ways. So, well, this has a lot of the information that I was saying. And uh, you know the things that you were talking about, pension and stuff is also mentioned over here. In the will, you can stipulate, you know, all of these different funds that you have, where you want it to go, and how you want it to be distributed. So that can be taken care of in the will. Uh, when yeah, you have it overrides. Things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can it can be taken care of all of the different you know um, uh, accounts that you don't have access to until death. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that can be taken care of in the will, where you can make sure that it gets distributed according to uh, the Islamic, you know, uh, distribution. So all of that, it could be done. So, and 
Uh, this lady, uh, she helped us. Uh, she's, she's here by Fairview. She's a Murray lawyer, Madeline Pitti. Uh, so she charges like $280 a will. Uh, I went to some other place. It's, they were like three, four hundred dollars. Uh, they have like right depends on the complexity of it. Yeah, no, I think it was pretty standard. Like one will to eighty like that. It doesn't matter what's yeah. Oh, well, if you have like uh, um, estates, businesses, okay, yeah. it becomes a bit complicated. Yeah. So the way she said it, she said like the first meeting you would come and just make a draft and ask you all the questions and how you want it to be set up, and then once you've reviewed it and you're okay with it, the next meeting you would sign it and then have it like officially uh, done. So. It's pretty important for us, especially in Muslim. Well, what are you saying that, um, you know, because so was asking a question about like liquidating our pensions. And it's like, let's say you have corporations, you can't just liquidate it very easily. Yeah. So it's about just uh, spelling out that everyone will have this share. Yeah, yeah exactly. You would do that. You would just spell until out. Until you end up selling it. Well, if you have it spelled out in terms of the stakes, then you've done your job. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, by law, whoever you stipulated owns that percentage in the business. Right. And so, whether it's liquidated or not, everyone got their share. Right on. This is one question: If, if you have children, yeah. um, does the does the wife manage the entire funds? She to like does it go to her, and then she like takes care of it because obviously the kids are too young. So, uh, Islamically speaking, usually when you appoint like in the Islamic term called the Wasi executive state, usually you stick with males uh, when it comes to most of these kind of things. Uh, but obviously, it has to be someone you trust, someone you would be sure of. And even and in your no right as well, the actual inheritance, right? Does yeah, the inheritance part is in trust for the children. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, like custody. That, yeah. custody. custody. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, like, that's allowed. Yeah, the money, for that. example. Like, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. Because the kids are too young. Yeah, yeah so that's whatever. part of the will. It's part of the question the lawyer does ask. They ask you, like, if you pass away and your kids are still young. Uh, will you appoint as a tutor for them yeah, yeah. and things like that? And some people ask those questions. No, same, like, what about the, what the money you're entitled to receive the funds to children? So actually, it's, important. it's it's very interesting. In the in the beginning of Surah Nisa, Allah mentions that you would give them their money, and once they have like their senses and they're like mature enough to take care of themselves. But ideally, you would give it to them when they're mature Islamically. But you might. Nowadays, you might want to hold yeah. on to it longer if it's how it is. I know when they did, they say like they'll, they can release them at 21 or 25, but it's up to you. You tell the notary when. Yeah, you, you know, Islamically, as long as you're not using the money for your own self or misusing the money because it's their money, your kids' money, it should be fine that you give it to them even when you feel it's right, even if it's at 18, 20, or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, like it's usually, it's. What's in the Quran actually is that you give it to them when they are capable of making decisions for themselves. Yeah, it could be given later, but as long as the money is like not uh, misused. And in terms of, um, if God forbid, the mother and father pass away in terms of custody of the children in Islam, who is, has first right or okay, so to the, yeah, the that's, godparents and stuff. So yeah, who, yeah. who should take care of your children? So there's a whole uh, chapter on that in Fiqh, uh, Hilal. So. In there are cases where parents get separated, and then there's custody questions when parents are separated. So up to a certain age, uh, especially in infancy, uh, the mother is responsible, especially until the kids can take care of basic needs like eating, going to the bathroom. Uh, the mother would be there uh, having custody. And then depending on whether it's a boy or a girl, uh, the girl would... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think both boys and girls would be with the father after that point. The girl will be taken care of by the father until she's married off, and the boy the same way because he needs to learn the etiquettes of being a man. Uh, so it's more uh, the, the father who has custody of the kids. In fact, Islamically, you attribute the kids to the father, not the mother. And so the father has custody. It's only in real, uh, really small infancy that the, the mother has custody of the kids when they're really small. But in the terms of death of both the parents, who both parents, the children. Uh, so it's it's the same us of our relative situation. Okay. It's us of our relatives that end up getting custody because it's the father's family because the father has, it's the father's kids. Wait, can you not decide if you want someone else? What if the, what if they're you don't find a competent? Like I don't have any brothers. I'm my father. You know, yeah, you away. could. Uh, you could decide. The father does have that right to give it to someone else. You could. I think that the father could decide someone else. But yeah. Can it be your wife's relatives? Like your own? 
It could be. It could be. Yeah, or they live in another country. country. I mean, like in Pakistan. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, it, it could be. Yeah. Yeah. All these things in Islam happen. is open to anyone. You can do anything you want. Uh, so, so like I said, just by default. I by by default, by default, it's supposed to be the father's uh, relatives, the Asma relatives. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the father could could be allowed yet to make to decide someone else. Or it could go to the judge, and the judge could use his discretion also in an Islamic state. So, uh, I know you guys are probably pretty tired. There is uh, there is more, but uh, it's not not usually as um, common or applicable. So we don't have to do it. I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty tired. We were supposed to have like a snack session in between and then keep going, but I think you guys are. And you guys look like you're pooped. Anyone have any other questions? You want to continue, by the way? I just, I just decided for you guys. You want to continue? There are also, I did the, the last discussion, it's very complicated, is you have situations where someone passes away, <clears throat> the inheritance doesn't get distributed. And then from the inheritors, more people keep passing away. You have multiple generations of, you know, dead people and it never got distributed from the top. So those are, it's called Manasseh, and those are like more complicated, if you guys are interested in that. And so, just to be clear, we were when we said one third for the non. Um, yeah. Let me just uh, do what I did. Yeah. yeah. I have my water, my water okay. assistant. One second. Mother. Mother. Real assistant. Yeah. Real assistant. One on Sunday assistant. Uh, three on Sunday assistants and one on Sunday brother. Okay. One can sign your brother? Yes. Okay. okay. Anyone else? No. You sure? Grandmother, grandfather? No. Uh, okay. You're not married? Married yet? Oh, wife? Wife, no, my wife. Okay, so how much should we give to your. Uh, let's start with your mother. One third for your mother? One six. One six. One six. One six for your mother. Okay, let's look at your full sisters. How much did they get? Half. Two. Half. Your full sister, right? Yeah. How much you get for your first full sister? Half. 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 Look at number five, full sister. Look at number five. You understand? Your father is there, so that's yeah. Right. yeah. You have a father. Yeah. Yeah. So your sister can't get? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what about your consignuant sisters and brothers? Yeah. Let's look at your consignuant brothers and sisters. What situation? Yeah. 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 Yeah, father and grand grandfather, so your consigning your brothers and sisters cannot get either. Brothers and sisters. Okay. Father's are similar. And your father will take the remainder. Yeah. Six, I guess five, six, okay. Pretty simple. So in the, in the uh, in the examples that we did with our wives and children and things like that, when push our parents pass away, then it's just the other people that will, they will remove that part of the equation and be 
younger people to just get keep their same percentages, their yeah. same fractions. Yeah, so yeah. you have to deal with who's alive, that's it. Yeah. Whoever's not alive, you have to create the problem with who's alive, that's it. Whoever's not alive will not like to have any money. And uh, sorry, and then the last question was that the one third of the non uh, entitled inheritors, so that's none of these 12 people or the asset is someone else that you want to give money to. The, when the first first thing you said that there's one third, not more than one third you can give to uh, non entitled inheritors, right? Yeah. So that's not these 12 people and not the asset. Yeah. And just random people that you might have. Yeah. yeah. Charities or Lake Shore Hospital. Right. It cannot be more than one third. I guess potentially the family of whoever was supposed to inherit had died in between would be kind of uh, uh, asking in this case for some other arrangement. I guess. Like uh, in the case where our inheritance is not split on time and then people start dying in the meantime. Oh, the Munasafa? You guys want to see that? And, it's a complicated uh, one. You want to see it? It's pretty interesting. You could see the children. You'll see, you'll see then uh, how it works. Okay, I'll do one for you guys. So, like, it's a lot of math. This is if the inheritors. But, like, let's say uh, I'm supposed to inherit, but in the meantime, I, I, I it didn't get split up. I died, and I have a son, daughter, or whatever, all this stuff. And so it has to go to your. I don't know. I'm not saying what it should be. I'm just saying that right. it can get a little bit sketchy. That maybe my son or daughter could say, like, "Oh, well, that was supposed to be my father's money." And I don't know. You understand? Like, I'm not. I don't know how it's supposed to be. But Okay. Yeah. Talking about multiple generations, right? He's saying like it was supposed to I'm be sorry. us who got it, but then you pass away before you got it, so now you're in your. Uh, that is what. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Okay. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm having. Your you're crotching your saying. So well, you do a problem. I'll show you how it works. It's like okay. This one. I just want to see if there's no mistakes. In this. Okay, so this is how we draw it up. You guys are ready? Uh, these were these were our like exam questions. I think it was the easy ones. For exam, you have to do all the hard ones. Got a whole bunch of questions. For you. That's how it goes. The woman that died, her name is Selena, okay? Here she is, lying on the floor. She dies, she leaves behind the husband. You have to write the name also. I don't know if I have enough space on the board, by the way. It's pretty big. Okay, daughter, Karima, mother, Alima. Okay, let's solve this first. How much do we want to give here? Husband. Husband gets? Uh, no, quarter. There's a daughter. No. Oh, there's okay. a daughter right now. So we're going to give a quarter here. How much should we give to the mother? One sixth. Yes. Okay. How much should we give to the daughter? Uh, you make your denominator here out of 12. Okay, now look at the portions. You have quarter, 
That's three for kind of this. Six, nine, eleven. That's twelve. So you have an extra. And there's no one to give to. So this is something called O, which we didn't get to because for me. everyone's brain ran out of oxygen. Throw so, it back in the mix. So what you do is you make the 12 into 13. It's called O, called increasing the denominator. So I'm going to write here O with an ring and make 13 here, okay? So because uh, you had three twelfths, six nine twelfths, mm -hmm. wait, what did I just do? What was it all or not? Was it was 11 over 12. It was 11 over 12? Yeah. Interesting. So that's why you, you're left with it. Yeah, I'm not above and below, right? I'm below. 11 over 12. You have 1 in 12 that you have to divide it now. Okay. So this is actually the more complicated one. This is called the 13 out of 12 would be that you, yeah, you yeah, run yeah. out of something, right? Yeah. So now what happens is what you have to do is you have to do something called rad. Rod means that, again, this is also something we didn't cover because it would take too much time. So you have to return something. You return it back to the extra portion. You have to return it back. In the same proportion. Yeah. So the way you do it is, you see, a husband and a wife, you cannot return back to them. Okay. So you have to give them their portion and return to the remainder. So you would work it out like this. You would have made your denominator, instead of 12, make it 4. Okay. And now, from the original denominator, you gave him 1 quarter, so you're going to give him 1 here. From the 1 6 and the half, okay, how many portions do you have? You have 3 because one half is three six, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one six, four portions. And you have four here. So it works out. It works out. So all you're gonna do is, you're just gonna give three times what you're gonna give here to here, right? Because one six times three is a half, right? So all you're gonna do is give three here, uh, sorry, give, Two here. We give one here. Hope I'm doing this right. Uh, one second. Wait, I don't know if I'm doing this right. That's five, actually. It doesn't work. That's five portions. And you have four. Because you need to give three times the amount, so you need to give uh, three here and one here. And you have four. Okay? I don't know if you guys are following. Three. Yeah, it doesn't work out because the ratio of one half to one six is three to one. Mm -hmm. So you have three portions you need to create for the daughter and one for the mother, and you only have four. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, yeah, you only have three remaining to give because you already gave here one. So you have three remaining and you have four here. So you need to you need to change your denominator. So the way you do it is you have a multiple that you use. The multiple you're gonna use is your four portions. So you're gonna create your new denominator by making your multiple, I'm gonna write n here. And if I multiply 4 into 16, I get 4 into 4, sorry, I get 16. So I'm going to write it like this. This is called this heat, which means the corrected number. I just wrote it on top. So now, from the 16, the husband now gets 4. So you do 1 times the 4. And for these guys, you multiply it into three, which is the remainder of the four. So you do nine, and you do uh, 
3. So you got 9, 10, 11, 12, and 16. So this is how the first problem is worked out. Okay? I don't forget it. <laughs> so out of 16 parts. So out of 16, the husband is getting 4, daughter getting 9, mother getting 3. Okay? It's called the Rat. Again, uh, we didn't end so with that. So the daughter is getting more than 50%. Now they're getting 9 out of 16. Yeah, because you have to return it back. Right. And getting more. And even the mother is getting more. Because you have to return you The husband is not getting more because you can't return to the husband. You can't return to the husband, you can't return to the wife. So it's called the Rat. Again, these are principles that were part of the seminar, but I just took them out, so now you're just following what I didn't explain. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's only the husband and the wife that don't get the remainder, so? Sorry? It's only the husband and the yeah, wife that can't get the remainder. So now, we're not done yet. So this is the inheritance of Salima, okay? Before these people get, what happened is that Zayd died. So what I do is, I put a box around Zayd, which means he went in the grave, like this. Like so, he's dead. And now I write the second inheritance problem for Zayd. So I write him here. I'm going to write him here, okay? So now Zayd leaves behind his wife. Her name happens to be Halima. I thought his wife was dead. So they... No, no, this is Zayd's Zay, wife. Zay. That was. That was okay. He had another wife. Oh, another, another wife. wife. Okay, another wife. Sorry, you're right. Another wife. Huh? <laughs> father. He has a father named Moore, Okay. You have to know the names. It's very important. A really funny in class. Someone's name would come up, and then you start thinking things. Yeah. And that his mother Rahima. Okay. So now, what you do here is, when you have something called Mafid Yad, Mafid Yad means what Zayd was already supposed to get from the first problem, and that's 4. So I'm going to write that 4 over here, possession. Okay, I'm going to write P for possession, and 4, because that's what he has, he's supposed to get. And before he got it, he died and left behind his inheritance. So we've got to work out this problem. This happens a lot, you know, like there's a land in Pakistan, and a few generations of the land is still there. You know. So now... Let's work this out. How much are we going to give to the wife? How much? One quarter. There's no kids, okay? You give one quarter because there's no kids. How much do you want to give to the father? So, this is a situation where, remember I told you the mother gets one third of the remainder, and there are two scenarios. Mother, father, wife, mother, father, husband. The mother gets one third of the remainder. So if you have three quarters left, then the mother gets a quarter, because that's one third of the remainder. And the father you give a half, right? So I'm gonna make my denominator four over here. So I have uh, two out of four, uh, and one out of four, right? So I'm going to write here two, one, two, one, okay? Now what you have to look at is the relationship between what he possesses from the previous problem and the denominator. <coughs> here it's perfect, it works out because there's four how much he has and there's four how much he's giving. So it's fine, you don't have to do anything. And you can move on. Okay? So when we move on, then what happens is Karima dies. So where, where's Karima? Right here. Karima's here. So she's dead now. I'm going to put a box around here. And I'm going to write her problem. I'm going to run out of space. I don't know how to do this. Get on the board. Okay. So let's put Karima over here. Karima leaves behind. She has two sons, Khalid and Abdullah. I'm going to write that. Son, Khalid. Uh, 
Fadil. Hasan Abdullah. Then she has daughter Ruqayya, grandmother Alima. Okay. Grandmother. By the way, this grandmother is the same mother over here, right? It's the same person. This person, this person, same, okay? So let's solve this. How much are we going to give here to the grandmother? One sixth, right? Well, who are the people again? There's daughter, son, son. Mm. Yeah, one sixth, right? Yeah. You guys forgot? One sixth. How much you want to give to the daughter and the son, son? Remainder, right? Asaba. Make sense? So look here now. We have. If you make this six the denominator, how many portions are we going to have between the two sons and the daughter? You're going to have two, two, one. five. Because the son needs double the daughter, and you have two sons. Two, one, two, five. But you only have, uh, you have five to give. So you're perfect. Yeah. So one, two, two. So I'll just put one, two, two. Okay. But now the problem is this. Look at how much she had in her possession. Karima and where's Karima here? Here. Look how much she had. How much does she have? Nine. Nine. I'm gonna write P9 here. She has she had nine, but she has to give six. So now there is a conflict in these two numbers. Okay? So now 50% more. Yeah, so now what you have to do is you have to work out these two numbers. You look at the relationship between these two numbers. These two numbers have a common factor. The common factor is three. Okay? Look at it. So if you factor out the three from the six and the nine, that's how you're going to know the multiple to, to solve the problem and to create your new denominator. So for example, over here, what I'm going to do is uh, make it uh, 12 and double everything. Okay. No, no, yeah. And 50% more. And then 50% more. Okay. So now we have to here. We're going to multiply all of these numbers by 6 factor of the 3, which is 2. All of these numbers get multiplied by 2. Over here, we're going to factor out the 3, we get 3. And those that number is multiplied by the bottom numbers. Denominator, factor out the common factor, and multiply it by the top. Over here, we factor out the common factor, multiply it by the bottom. So if you do that, we're going to have now... What number is this? One. So if I write the new numbers, I'm going to have times three everything. So I'm going to have, wait, two, I'm sorry, times two. Factor out the three times right the bottom. Two. So two times two is four, times two is two, times two is six, times two is 32. Okay, and then over here, times three. So you're gonna have three, because it's only one here, right? Three, three, six, 
six, six. Now you have Alima died. She dies now, and I don't have space. <laughs> So she, she dies both places, you have to put a box. I don't know where to write it. Yeah, just like one question. Yeah, let's go over there. But it's stuck to the thing, you can't, you can't bring it here. There's actually a board that we have downstairs that you can carry. There's not. I think, I don't know if it's on the wall or if you can bring it. We want? We need now? Seven? It's not that big. But I, don't, I think it might be stuck on the wall. Even nowadays, I don't know how accurate they are. They are, they are like Islamic inheritance calculators and stuff. You could just put in uh, the inheritors and it does the whole thing for you. But right. it's, it is important to know, you know how things work mm -hmm. because all these things can go away. You know, people don't think that you know technology is gonna, just going to be there forever and you know you can just rely on it. You know, like we were in the states when we went to Lake George, and for some reason our internet wasn't working, yeah. and you just become so bad with direction. Because you're using Google Maps all the time, and the one time Google Maps is gone, you're like, you don't know where you're you turn. You don't know right, you don't know left, you don't know anything. You know, like, it's, it's really bad, right? Like, you're handicapped because you're so re reliant on the thing just telling you to follow the blue line, you know, all the time. Yeah. Same thing with Salat times. You're so reliant on the clock. You look at the sun, you don't know anything. You look at the moon, you don't know anything. You know? Does that say Okay, perfect. Mashallah. All right, guys. Here we are. The title is correct. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. The title is correct. Okay, but you guys need to see both, so Sam, can you just see them? Sam, you just yeah, need to see both words. This can go away. Alright, it's not going to take long. Alright, Sam, just put it in. So we just killed Alima, and uh, let's put it right over here. So she dies. Okay. She leaves behind husband of the Rahman. Then you have uh, two brothers, Abdul Rahim and Abdul Karim. Okay, how much we're giving here to the husband? A half. Okay. And the two brothers, Asaba. Right? So I give each of them a quarter. 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 Make this out of four. So here you have one, two, two. Okay, now Alima, look at her possession. You have to add the, both of these. Six and three. And so there's nine here she has. Okay? We're gonna write P9 over here. So what she has in her possession is nine. Now look at the relationship between the denominator and the and the possession. There is none. This, there aren't common factors. Uh, they don't have common factors. They don't have multiples. They're all the same number, nine and four. So here you have to use the entirety of the number. You can't change anything. 
So you're going to do 4 multiplied into everything on top, 9 multiplied into everything on the bottom. Then you do that, you come up with right, 9, 9, 18, and 4 into everything on top. So you're going to do uh, 4 times 6, right? 24. 24, 3 times 4, 16, sorry, okay, and you have uh, four, right, 8, 16, uh, 8, and you're going to change this here, 32 times 4, anyone know? 32 times 4? 128. 128. All right. I have the answer. I don't have the process. I only have the answer to make sure I reach there. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I knew I have to get to this number. So then the last thing you do is you write all the living people that are still alive. You write their names. You write it in Arabic like this, like so. This word spells out Ahliya, which means a lot of people. And you write everyone out. So you have Halima. Yeah, right. Halima. Halima gets eight. Okay. Then you have four. Four gets uh, 16. Then you have Rahima. It's pretty bad for you. For him, I'm sorry, I'm getting eight. Okay, a lot of people. Am I writing right according to what's on the board, or is it wrong? Okay, I had 12, yeah. Cloud 24, I'm blood 24. Cloud 24, yeah. I don't see where we're in our hands. 24. Abdullah. Abdullah 24. Abdullah 24. Abdullah 24. Abdullah 24. And it should be Abdurrahman 18, I think. Abdurrahim 9, Abdurrahim 9. Yeah, that's this one. Okay. Okay. You have one, how much? 128. 128. That's your final thing. How do you know So this is the inheritance for 18. Abdurrahim. Where is it? Abdurrahman. Abdur Abdurrahim is uh, here. So the this is the inheritance of Salima that's now being distributed to one, two, third generation of people. And it's not just third generation along the way, second. And first also got whoever was still alive. There's nine people on the first. That's how it works. Numbers get really big, they get you get into the thousands. You know. I'm sure if people are huge, huge problems there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's better not the one 